Yeah, I probably know, bro. Good to go. Yo, 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 yo. What's up, man? It's Pod Sun Radio. We back in the house with another very special episode. I want to give a big shout out to the Late Night Chaos podcast. You know, go check out latenightchaos.com. Go check out their show. They're going to be talking to some of Arizona's hottest artists, or you can go see them at some of the hottest events out DJing and doing things like that. But uh, they brought us to the new space. You know, we got something real big going on. We got a very special guest. You know how Pod Sun Radio like to do. We bring you some of your best interviews, whether it be music, whether it be sports, whether it be real estate. We might even bring an adult entertainer in here from time to time. You know, you just never know what's going on. But uh, today we got a very special guest in the house today. An Arizona legend, a West Side legend, uh, somebody who took it to the highest heights, you know what I mean? From And y'all don't watch them grind his way up from uh, what the Arizona Rising Stars and uh, Millennium High School to University of Arizona, all the way to the league. We got my man Marquis Flowers in the building. How you doing, big dog? I'm good. I'm good. Appreciate you for having me. Man, I appreciate you for coming on, man. It's You know, we're trying to just keep branching out and expanding, but... Um, one of the first things I want to always talk to you about because we like to get to know people and shit like that. So kind of from your perspective, talk about just uh, Canvas, what growing up in Phoenix was like, you know, from you, from your perspective. Oh, man, it's everything, man. I tell, you know, every, everywhere I go, man, Phoenix is home. Um, grew up west side of Phoenix. Everybody know me, you know. Uh, a couple of teams I've been on, they actually call me West Side Keys because, you know, I let them know every, everywhere I go. <laughs> sure, man. Man. Yeah, I'm from, I'm from the west side, so... But, yeah, man, Phoenix is always going to be home. Um, growing up in Phoenix, man, around where I grew up, you know, you know, back when we was kids, man, it was all about, you know, just having fun, playing sports, man. I was lucky enough to have a, you know, father in my life that was on me, yes, sir. keeping me out of trouble, you know, training me and um, getting me right, man. Uh, I just got to thank God, and, you know, for the blessings that I got and how far I made it. But, yeah, yeah man, Phoenix will always be home, man. Yeah, for sure. I, that's major. And um, just to even have your father, everybody needs that pillar, you know. And I feel like, especially at the age we had growing up, you can kind of see the difference once it gets to a certain age of, you know, whether you had that support system or whether you was uh, fending for yourself. So God bless you for that. But um, still growing up, you faced different elements and things like that. So was your childhood dominated just by sports activities and extracurricular activities? Or, or did you have to face that element of the streets at some point? <clears throat> um, You know, I think it was a mixture of both. Uh, obviously, man, I love sports. That was just something that, that I loved. Um, you know, it started with playing video mm -hmm. games and then you know how, you know, going out, playing with your friends, mm -hmm. you know, tackle the running back. And when you just out there just playing, man, sports is one of them things that I just loved. I loved football. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, you know, I grew up with a lot of guys, you know, who didn't make it. Some, you know, end up going to prison and all that, man. But, to, you know, to society, probably, you know, bad guys. But to me, those those are my dogs. Those are my brothers. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, my pops, you know, he was around, you know, new dudes spending night at my house and all that. So I think it's always going to be an element of the streets. You have a choice to make. And yeah. I think my pops just, you know, he raised me in a way that, you know, there was certain stuff that, you know, I was still, you know, I wasn't watched 24-7. Yeah. So, you know, there was stuff that I could have got into that, you know, just by being raised right by my mom and my dad, you know, that I made the right choice. And no, you know, I got in trouble, but it was never, you know, that big. You know, I would, you know, I would be doing, the, I would fight. You yeah. know, I would definitely fight. Just you regular know? stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, regular stuff like that. But, you know, as you get older, you know, some dudes, yeah. they advertise get bigger, you know. And a lot yeah. of them dudes, they have fathers in their life, so... You know, I always use the the simple excuse like, nah, you know, if they asked me to do something, you know, that was going to get us in trouble, I'd be like, nah, man, you know, my dad, you know, my dad, he'll be my ass. <laughs> he'll be my ass and your yeah, ass. Yeah, it so, you know, it was, it was one of those things. But I think, you know, sports definitely saved me for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, just being occupied with, you know, wanting to play, yeah. wanting to practice, wanting to do good in that kind of took me away from, you know, all the bad things I could have done. You know, you still going to get in trouble here and there as a kid, but yeah, it wasn't nothing very serious. But, you know, the streets was definitely there, you know, growing up in West Phoenix, you know. Everywhere got tough parts, but, you know, I'm, I'm just blessed I could stay out of it. You know, I avoided a lot of the big trouble. You Hell, know? yeah, yeah. Just fighting and doing stuff like that. But, you know, Pops always was there, and 
always let me know, you know, especially Pops growing up where he grew up, mm -hmm. you know, so um, he definitely was aware of it, you know, and uh, he definitely let me know, kept me right. So. Yeah, no, nah, that's major. And I, yeah. I say shine moment just as like, you know, when you shine in or when you're giving good advice or whatever, you know, that's my little slogan and things like that. But that's funny. It sounds like that day, like, not even just come beat my ass and your ass. He going to go beat your daddy ass <laughs> up after that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about uh, your career, Millennium High School. It's, actually, you know what? Before I do that, just because I'm going to give you a little background because the only reason I knew you was on the AZ Rising Stars because I'm cool with Jamal and shit like that, so he kind of had, like, detail to me how you came up. So first, talk about the AZ Rising Stars experience. Oh, it's the, it's the Rising Sun. Oh, Rising. Right. Oh, yeah, sorry. Right, right, Don't, I, I apologize to no, all y'all. The Rising Sun. We were just talking about this last night. You should have called us the Rising Stars. Cause, I mean, that team that I um, ended up going on with me, Jamal, my cousin Demetrius, Keegan Heron, my other cousin, Kenyana Wilson, Demetrius. So, I mean, Judith, I don't know, but we had Serena, we had a, wow. we had a team, man, KJ. We had a, it was like a dream team of track, man, and, um, I was just telling my uncle because he just signed my little cousin up, so mm -hmm. he's running. I can't wait to see what he does with it. But so the program's still going strong. Program's still going strong, man. Sebastian's still out there changing lives for kids, which is a good thing. They're still out there running, but yeah, man, through track and um, at, at first when I started running track, I didn't want to run track. Uh -huh. I'm not gonna lie to you, I was I was all about football, man. Uh -huh. I, that was my that was my one true, you know, I loved football. But my dad was one of them, you know, he was he, he knew who I was. You yeah. know, I was one of them. I'm, I was one of them kids that if you put me in something and I worked at it, I could be good at it. Yeah. But I just wanted to play football. But he was like, you an athlete. I want to put you in everything. Absolutely. And it'll help you with football. So, man, when I first started running track, that's when I met, you know, I met a lot of a lot of them guys. I still talk to, you know, yeah. um, Jamal, that's my dog. You meet them guys, man, you run with them. And we was fast, man. Yeah, yeah we, we was fast, man. Yeah, I seen you ran a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, like, yeah, we was fast, man. So it wasn't like, you know, we was fast, man. So all them guys out there, man, we still, you know, talk about it to this day, the memories that we had out there. Um, going against the rival, do right. Marcus mm -hmm. Sweeney was out there. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. so that was the South Side squad. Yeah, that was the South Side Got squad, you. you know. So it was, it was, a, it was a, they had some fast dudes too, man. So it was always us against them. And uh, them days, man, never get old. And um, you know, you grow up so fast when you when you're doing sports like yeah. that. You you don't realize it. You know, I know we all went to high school, kind of went our separate ways. Uh -huh. And um, I didn't see a lot of them guys. And you know, what brought us back was obviously the passing of you know KJ. Yeah. And um, you know, we seen each other. And you know, I still talk to a lot of them guys. You know, ever since then, man, you want to keep in touch. But it's crazy how old we are now. Cause it felt like yesterday we was out there running. You know, four by one team together, me, Jamal, Demetrius, and all them. So yeah. Um. Yeah, man, I'm Rising Suns days, man. It was one of the best days, man. I'm looking forward to watching my little cousin run too yeah. now, you know, because he's going to have that same kind of kind of fun out okay. there. That's dope. So, I mean, just a quick question. Um, I didn't have this written down, honestly, but you said you didn't feel like it would help you with football. Overall, did it help you with football for somebody who's facing that same thing as a kid? Yeah, I mean, it definitely helped. Um, I just didn't want to run track because, you know, it, it, took, it takes a little bit. You know, you're not just going to go out there. You know, I knew I was fast. I knew I could run. But, you know, when I went out there at club track, it's like a whole different world. You know, guys who's been doing it. Mm -hmm. So it took me a little bit to, you know, um, get used to it. But it definitely helped me because it taught me how to run. It taught yeah. me how fast I was, too. You know, it's, it's like club ball. You, yeah. you with the best of the best. Pretty you with the best of the best, exactly. And it taught me how to run. It taught, it, you know, opened up my stride. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was uh, it was some good stuff, man. So it definitely helped me, man. Um, I was already hitting the sideline on them dudes. If I wonder yeah. if I came from track, you kind of could tell that I ran track. Because yeah. I started to open up my stride more, run on the toes and, you know, do stuff like that. But, I mean, it definitely helps. It yeah. definitely helps. No, that's good. Good advice for the young. Like, cause some there's somewhere there's a young kid right now who's going through the same exact yeah. thing. But all right, so all right, let's take it to Millennium High School, man. What was your uh, obviously once you hit varsity? But what was your career like uh, at Millennium? Clearly, it was great. But for you, from your perspective, uh, Millennium was just one of them things. You know, I wasn't. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I wasn't supposed to go to Millennium, man. Yeah, because all the big, you, you, I'm sure all the big schools wanted you. Yeah, you know, a lot of schools <laughs> wanted you, but you know, recruiting was illegal, so they couldn't really do that. You know, they had talked to my pops and whatnot, and they kind of told them. But you know, me being from, you know, West, you know, I'm supposed to go to Tallis in high school. That's where, you know, family went. Yeah. You know, I used to go watch Marcus Thomas play, so, you know, in my head, I thought I was going to Tallis, but, yeah. you know, it probably wouldn't have been a good idea. I probably would have gotten in trouble no, and no. stuff, because, you know, that's who I was rolling with. You know, my cousin, my older cousin was there, and, you know, that's who I was rolling with. A lot of, you know, you know, we thought, you know, we from West Phoenix. Yeah, you know? so nah, that element of the streets is all yeah, through Tallis. It's all through Tallis. <laughs> so, you know, 
my dad just, you know, he made a, a, a decision that, you know, I wasn't really going to go to Millennium. I can't remember how it honestly happened. You know, I was going to go to Copper Canyon. I was going to go to, I was actually going to go to Chaparral. I personally wanted to go to Chaparral. Yes. And, um, but you know, Scottsdale, you know, going all the way out there, you know, that was really going to be a different world. But, um, I ended up going to Millennium. And when I first got to Millennium, I'm not going to lie. When I first got there, it was more like, you know, what am I doing here? Yeah. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to you. You know, it wasn't a whole bunch of people that looked like me. Yeah. You know, it was, you know, it was a, a lot of, um, good year, man. Yeah. yeah it's good yeah, year. Put it that way. It was a lot of white people. I'm not, I'm not. West side ASU. Yeah. It was a lot of, it was a lot of white people there. You know, it wasn't a lot of black people there. So, you know, I'm used to, you know, seeing my people, you know, but I'm not going to lie to it. It, it. it got me right, man. Yeah. And then shine on different. Yeah. It, it let me see a whole different world, different um perspective. And like, you know what? I, I, st- I got out of trouble. You know, it's like when you take somebody out of that stuff where you think being in trouble and all your friends getting in trouble, you think that's the normal. Ooh, yeah. When you go somewhere and, you know, them, them kids ain't really getting in trouble at all like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like next thing you know, you, you're not getting in trouble no more. Now you just kind of, you know, and um, Millennium ended up, it started off kind of shaky because I was hurt when I started on my freshman year. Mm-hmm. I was limping. Down the sideline, I still play. My dad wasn't gonna let me play. I had hurt myself from track, and um, I had a real bad hamstring injury to carry into my freshman year. So I'm going into my sophomore year, and um, and then that's when I talked to the coach, and they was telling me, you know, if I was good enough, I wouldn't touch, you know, JV football. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, I know I could play. Yeah. You know, I'm a sophomore. I play with varsity. It don't matter to me. Um, you know, my pops was training me, so you know, we was ready for whatever. And my hamstring actually held up pretty good. So from there on, sophomore year, I remember, you know, they told me I was on varsity, starting safety. They had moved me. I usually play linebacker. They had moved me to safety, mm-hmm. you know. So, you know, I learned a new position, learned safety. And ever since then, it kind of took off. You know, I yeah. only played one way. A lot of people don't know. I only played defense my sophomore year at Millennium. And we was really good. We had a really good defense. One of my favorite coaches in Coach Giddy, man. He was on me. He was on me tough, but he put me in um, in positions, man, to really show my athleticism and really succeed in Millennium. Yeah. And um, you know, sophomore year, you know, the coach left. New coach came in junior year. You know, we had been saying let's play both ways. You know, my first position is naturally is running back. Yes. You know, I got a son. He out here playing flag football. You know, I think he gonna play running back, man. That's what I knew you as was a running yeah, back when yeah. I was in high school. Yeah. We we I'm naturally a running back, man. That's my first position. That's my first love. Um, yeah, man, I could run the ball, man. I knew I knew how to run the ball. So, you know, my junior year, they said, you know, we're going to play both ways, you know. So they was like, you know, y'all got to, you know, basically try out or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, cool, you know, whatever. I'm thinking in my head, I'm going to be running back. Yeah. But I'm hitting this growth spurt, man. I'm, I'm, I don't know how, but I'm about six foot, six one yeah. now. You know, I'm taller than Pops. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm thinking I'm going to be five nine, five ten, thinking I'm going to play running back. So I'm like, I'm, I'm just hitting this growth spurt. So, you know, junior year came around. That's when I honestly, honestly, a lot of people don't know. Junior year was honestly my biggest year for me yeah. personally. Again, I wasn't getting in trouble, you know, because I'm in Millennium High School. There's really nothing to get in trouble with. Mm-hmm. Nobody was messing with me. I wasn't really getting into no fights. Everybody was cool, man. So now the normal for me was going to school and not getting in trouble. Yeah. You know, it was almost abnormal if I got in trouble. Like It was almost like, what am I doing if I'm in detention or something like that? You know, I'm not going to, I mean, I still got in trouble. I'm putting on Angel, you know what I'm saying? But not real trouble. Yeah, not real trouble. You know, I tell people all the time, I get mad. You know, the West Side definitely going to come out. But (laughs) they didn't really, you know, it was good people up there. So, you know, um, my junior year is when I had, you know, I played running back and I played safety. And I had a really good year on defense. Mm -hmm. You know, and and to me, I had an okay year on offense. You know, I got got into it with the coach or whatever, missed a couple games, only had... I don't even know if I had a thousand yards rushing that year, yeah. but everybody was talking about me on the offensive side, and I'm just thinking to myself, like, y'all don't even know. But I actually, after that year, I was actually named after my junior year, high school All American. Shine and, moment. Yeah, and I got offers and all that. And a lot of people didn't know that. Pete Carroll came down to the school. What? And, and, and yeah, he came down to the school. I saw Pete Carroll. He, you know, he ran into me. He was going to talk to the coaches, so he was there. Um, a lot of coaches started coming down to the school, so, you know, buzz started going around. So now I'm like, you know, I'm like, uh, okay, you know, I'm starting to kind of get, you know, some notice. I'm telling my dad, you know, I know my dad was a little worried because at the time, Millennium wasn't a big 
we weren't a big school, you know, yeah. we were four A school, right? The powerhouses was the Centennials, the the Hamiltons. So he was kind of worried, like, man, why he ain't got no offers yet? And I kept telling him, like, you know, they'll come. Yeah. They'll come. And, you know, he was he was talking about transferring me schools and doing all that. And I'm like, you don't got to do that. Yeah. You know, now I didn't make friends here. Now, you know, I didn't got, you know, I, I'm i here now. Yeah. I want to I wanna play from Lenny. I want to show him. Like, I'm going to get an offer. Like, I'm, I'm not worried about it. So he trying to do his best for me. Um, but I'm trying to tell him, like, nah, we good. And I, I can't remember. I know my first offer was ASU. Um, I was sitting in class and they called me out. Um, my coach said he wanted to see me. He gave me the envelope and I opened it and ASU had offered me. So I was like, okay, you know, full ride scholarship. I'm like, that. Shine moment yeah, again. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, you know, I go home, take it to my dad, you know, full ride scholarship to ASU. And, you know, I think like a couple of days later, U of A offered me. So then I'm like, okay, now they starting to come in. Now we kind of sitting. I'm like, okay, U of A offered me. That's what's up. And then next thing you know, I'm getting offers and letters from schools. And now, now that the the first team pulled the trigger, now everybody pulling the trigger. Mm-hmm. So I'm already a high school all American. I'm gonna go to the Army game, and you know, me and my dad used to watch that. So you know, he used to always sit there and say, you know, because my favorite players was you know, Adrian Peterson and all that. Yeah. We used to watch them at the Army game. He used to always say, man, I want you to commit at this game. I want you to go to this game and commit. Yeah. And I used to be like, okay, you know, I'm thinking like, you know, that's that'd be pretty cool. So. I'm going to the Army All American game. They seem you know I'm starting to get offers and offers and offers and offers. I didn't know how much pressure it really was until yeah. I got all these offers. Now I see my name going into my senior year. They coming out with articles saying I'm the number one player in the state. Wow. So now I got all this buzz, all this. Now I really can't do nothing. Now if I do something, it's everywhere. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So now I really gotta watch myself, gotta watch how how I do, you know. I'm getting all the fame, everything that come with it. It's the little yeah. high school fame, the little yeah. high. Hey, it's amazing though. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's amazing, you know, but it's you know, it, it was it was a little pressure, you know. I got I got girls from other schools hitting me up. I got, you know, acting like everybody acting like they know me, you know. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, I'm you know, I mean I'm always keeping I'm gonna be down to earth. To me, I was just another person, you know, yeah. just a person who likes to play football. Mm-hmm. So I go into my senior season and you know, we get a new coach. He called us in there and I'm I'm thinking in my senior season, I'm trying to win. Yeah. Um, that's the biggest thing, you know, high school is one of the funnest times. I'm trying to win with my partners. Mm-hmm. We trying to win. So we was four A at the time. And I guess our school got a lot of buzz or whatever. So he came and called us in and like they moved us up to five A to a higher division. Yeah, five so A like, too. Yeah. So I'm mm-hmm. like, why? And he was like, they just moved us up to five A. He was like, I think he said something like, you know, um, what did he say? They moved us up to five A, and he was like, are you scared to play against them? You know, so you know yeah. me. You know, I'm like, come on, man, you don't ain't scared to play against yeah. them. Stop playing with me. You know, I don't care about that. It was like, you know, we 40 students over. I said, we would have won if we was in 4A. Though. Yeah. So are you sure you want to move up to 5A? Because we were for sure going to, we was going to be the favorites. I was I was thinking in my head, we definitely win it. Yeah. I said, but now we're going to have to, you know, dig deep, get some, you know, we're going to have to go get some good teams. We're going to go in against Centennial. We're going against Westview. We're going against, yeah. you know, we're not even going against Peoria no more. So, mm-hmm. um, by the way, Ma, I forgot. You lucky I skipped over the part where we beat Peoria. <laughs> Yeah, he remembers what, what year? That. Was good. Uh, that was my sophomore year. We beat Peoria, but then so Maul came sure. back. You know, Maul came back his senior year. Oh, Maul went crazy. Yeah, he went crazy. Yeah. He went crazy yeah. on us. So he be always talking about that. But I was going crazy on them too. Yeah, you know. So you know, we be going back and forth about that. So yeah, Maul, man, he did good. Yeah, he went crazy on us. But uh, um, this was senior year. Now that what I'm talking about, I'll go back to senior year. And now, you know, I just know I got to get ready for a season. I know I'm the number one player in the state. So I know everything, every game that I have, they're going to critique it. You know, they gave me four stars. And I wasn't big on the stars. But I I knew why they didn't give me five stars. I actually got invited to a USC combine in California where a lot of guys go to get that fifth star. And I was going at first. And I I think I had surgery on my wrist or something. So we had to cancel. I couldn't go. So they gave me four stars. And it was like he would have got his fifth star. He would have competed with these guys up here. So, again, it didn't matter to me. I didn't care for about the stars, you know, that's something for them to do and debate. But I just knew every game I played, it was going to be, is he really this good? Is he overrated? Uh Is he this, he that? So, you know, I kind of ignored it, you know, as a kid. But I'm in high school, as a high school kid, I'm literally, there's people coming to my school. They're pulling me up to the office to sign cars for people. And I'm just like, you know, why am I getting pulled out of class to sign cars for somebody (laughs) I don't know? I got guys writing me from prison 
you know, because one of my big offers was uh, Notre Dame. Notre uh-huh. Dame offered me, but they offered me to play running back. Uh-huh. So I had a couple offers to play running back. And, you know, but I'm, you know, and that's another decision I had to make. You know, I had a lot of offers to play safety. I had a lot of, and I had about three offers to play running back. But one of the schools was Notre Dame. Yeah. So I had to sit there and, you know, do I want to play running back? Yeah. Is this what I want to do? Do I want to keep getting hit in my legs? Because yeah. I'm a tall guy coming through there. They, yeah. Them guys weren't trying to hit me straight up. They was hitting my legs, you yeah. know? So, um, you know, I'm like, man, I don't know. You know, I'm, I, that was something I really had to think about. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, I had a guy write me from prison. He wrote me a three-page paper on why I should go to Notre Dame. Wow. Page uh, yo, that's a shine. That's one of the biggest <laughs> shine moments I've yeah. ever had. So <laughs> he was a fan of you, and you didn't know this guy. I didn't know this guy. You know, he just knew I got offered to Notre Dame. He was in prison. He wrote it, sent it to the school. I had the letter too. You know, I yeah. opened it. I read it. You know, you know, he made some strong points. But I'm like, I don't know this dude, man. You yeah. probably from prison talking about why I should go to Notre Dame. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. So I'm like, I'm like, I didn't know what to do, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't know what to do. You know, and that's when I realized, you know, I'm, I'm 18 years old, or 17 going on 18. I'm like, I got to make a decision. Half the family going to be happy. Half the family going to be mad. Mm-hmm. You know, half the family not going to agree with Some people going to rock with me. A lot of fans is going to be mad. A lot of people going to be like, why would he go there? So, you know, I start taking visits. You mm-hmm. know, I went to visits. You know, I went to Notre Dame. I went to UCLA. I went to ASU. Mm-hmm. I went to U of A. Yeah. You know, and I went. And, you know, honestly, man. The biggest thing about, you know, college visits, what people don't understand, I wasn't a big guy. You know, Oregon came and recruited me like, look, we got the best uniforms, you know, because sometimes they give kids a bad. And I'm just yeah. like, I ain't really tripping on a uniform, yeah. bro. You know, uh, I'm looking for We got the best that. uniforms. Yeah, you know, everybody had a different kind of pitch. You know, SC was real. You know, they kept it real. I liked the recruiting coach for SC. We got along real good. And they was Jethro Franklin, man. You know, as a young kid, man, we, we got along real good. And at that time, man, I used to, you know, really, really – you know, watch Taylor Mays. I was yeah. a Taylor oh, Mays yeah. fan when I was in high school, man, because, you know. He used to yeah, play that yeah. wood. He, he was that guy. So, you know, I was a Taylor Mays fan. You know, Adrian Peterson fan, running back, Taylor Mays, defense. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, when SC came, you know, my dad was huge SC. You know, my uncle, he's from California. Yeah. So, they all SC. I got a lot of family in California right there by SC. So, everybody like That's USC. in the hood, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, I tell you, you know, we not from the we not from the birds, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, um so we um you know, we took a visit out there, you know, I went out there and you know, every college was, you know, nice, obviously it's college, you know, but UCLA was really nice. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really liked UCLA. And I was like, man, I, I could see myself at UCLA. Yeah. But then, you know, my youngest kid, you know, I'm from Arizona, I ain't never really left Arizona. Yeah. I'm a homebody, you know, I ain't been out of Arizona more than a week. So I'm like, nah, man, I can't leave Arizona like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, it wasn't about, you know, I, I had my girlfriend at the time that I actually am still with, but it wasn't even about that. That's it big. wasn't about, it wasn't about her. It wasn't about my mom. It was more about where can I be comfortable for four years? Yes. So I took a visit to Arizona and, you know, I'm thinking nothing of it. <laughs> And, man, the Arizona visit just hit home because I was with the strength and conditioning coach. And I actually, for the, uh, out of all the visits, I felt like this was a guy who was going to look out for me, you know. Yeah. Look out for me, make sure I'm staying right, make sure, you know, because you can still get in trouble when you go to college. I mean, we talking about guys from everywhere now. Absolutely. You know, that's from different hoods, different places. You know, you, you could definitely take the wrong path. You know, your parents ain't there no more. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So you got to have somebody who's going to really look out. And, um... Yeah, his name ain't Coach Ed, man. I'll never forget. So I, I that that visit really hit home. I'm like, man, I'm really thinking about going to Arizona. Yeah. So my dad wants to keep it this big secret because you know everybody, you know how they do the whole. Where's he going? Where's Absolutely. he going? Me, I don't really like secrets. I really didn't care. So I started kind of telling people, man, I'm kind of you know thinking about Arizona. And I'll never forget it. You know, I told my coach, he was like, Arizona, you gonna choose Arizona over Notre Dame and all that. So I'm like, I shouldn't even tell you. Yeah. You know, so like I'm gonna try to choose for me. Like, yeah. I went to Notre Dame. You know, it was cool, but it was. The whole Catholic scene and yeah. the whole, I just wasn't feeling it. Yeah. It's cold out there. I'm from Arizona. I ain't yeah. trying to play no cold like that. You know, it was the little reasons like that. I was 18 years old, you know, so um, i never forget, you know, I was like, man, UCLA was really close, though. I really like UCLA, but do I want to be in California, in the burbs in California? Yeah. You know, and, you know, I... It was tough, man. It was really tough. And I'm like, ASU or U of A, do I want to stay home? I feel like ASU was too close. I'm like, man, I could easily get into some stuff yeah. back, you know, with head right back down to 10. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's easy, 
You know, because it's it's so it's so close, man. All the distractions is here that I could easily get part of that because hey, she was so close. And at the time, hey, she was trash. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they was trash. You know, they had Vontez. You know, he was balling. Yeah. But they was really trash. And uh, my visit, they played U of A, lost to U of A. I went to SC. My visit, they played U of A, lost to U of A. Yeah. Um. So U of A was out here beating everybody. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, U of A up and coming. So I'm like, I really like U of A. You know, I seen Gronk on the at the bowl game. I met some mm-hmm. dudes, you know, some dudes that I didn't get to really play with, but they was cool when I went on my visit. Everybody was cool, you know. And um it was just one of them things, man. You know, I had obviously my boys from track, you know, TJ Simpson, Jamal Miles at yeah. ASU. So they was trying to pull me to ASU. I'm like, man, you know, what you know, what do I do? Yeah. You know, what do I do? So it was just one of them things, man. I finally just came out and I'm like, man, I wanna go to Arizona. You know, I don't think Pops was too happy. He wanted me to go to SC. But he was happy, though. You know, obviously, Absolutely. he was happy, you know, that I even have a choice like that. But there was a lot of people that, you know, why would he go to Arizona? Yeah, but that's he, big that you have to wear with us, especially at that age, to stand on your own decision-making. Yeah. And um, actually, I want to say a couple things, because whoever wrote that letter from Notre Dame, that is hilarious <laughs> that Notre Dame even has those. It's a Catholic school. They got prison people, right? That's huge, you know what I'm saying? So that's big, but... The way that you, like, I know you've been media trained, obviously, because you were in the league, but even the way you articulate yourself is better than that. Like, you could probably do your own, like, talk show or, like, storytelling type thing, because the way you canvas it and the imagery you put in it almost puts the people there. Like, I feel like I was there. You know what I mean? Yeah. In the way you just took us all through it. But, um, okay, so, obviously, I was going to ask you Wednesday, State, but you pretty much just told us y'all didn't get to Wednesday. State. But, okay, so, one thing I want to get into, because I want to go a little bit more in depth into the college, even though you just did. But one thing I want to touch on was um, KJ. I didn't know KJ. I got to meet KJ once through Jamal. And then, um, unfortunately, he passed probably like a week or, or two later or something like that. But I could see the impact that his passing had even at that time. And obviously, you were a senior in high school at that time. So that's a really young age. So kind of explain what, what that was like for you, that experience, and how that helped even propel you forward. I mean, it was it was one of the one of the toughest moments, man. You know, because KJ was one of them guys, man. Who he was just, you know, he was always so live, man, alive, man. He always asked questions. You know, he was always curious. You know, and that was my that was my partner when I first started running track. He was like one of the first, you know, first, you know, friends I made from the Arizona Rising Suns. You know, we hung out. You know, he spent the night at the house, all that. You know, I'm very cool with his family, so. You know, obviously, when we go our separate ways, I know he played Peoria. Mm-hmm. I had talked to him probably like, you know, that's back when MySpace was out. Yep. So KJ had wrote me, you know, like, man, I see you, you know, I'm getting all these offers. You know, it's crazy. And I'm like, yeah, man, it is crazy. You know, we do our little trash talk or whatever. But KJ asked me straight up, like, man, where are you thinking about going? And I told him, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to go to Arizona, bro. Yeah. You know, like, I ain't really told nobody, but, you know, I don't really too surprised. I'm like, I'm probably going to go to Arizona. He was like, really? He's like, yeah. He's like, I might go to ASU. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm still gonna be beating you. And all that. So we had just had that that conversation. Like, we cool. And I'm like, yeah, bro. I'm like, you know, I'm thinking nothing of it. I get at you, you know. I get at you later, you know. Yeah. I hit you, you know, when I get back on here. And I'll never forget, you know. I'm with my other cousin, you know, who knew KJ. And um, my pops called me. And, you know, I'm thinking he called me because you know, there's I got this dude that's talking stuff back then. First time dude from a whole another school, and I'm telling yeah. him dude, like, dude, I'm about to hurt you. Like, you think I'm from Millennium? <laughs> And, you know, I think he called me about that. And I remember him telling me, like, sounded sad. And he was just like, man, I just, you know, heard some terrible news. And he just told me, you know, KJ, man, he passed away. And I'm just sitting there like, what? It was more like disbelief. I just talked to him. Yeah. I'm like, nah, this can't be true. So, you know, the first thing you do is in denial. Like, there's no way. So I go back and write him on MySpace. I called the De- um, Anthony, which was another one of our friends. And yeah. he just, you know, he came and answered the phone. He crying so hard. So it was just one of them things. It was just like, you know, being 18, just starting, you know, for a while, man, because I didn't have my license, you yeah. know, and I'm like, it's crazy when you get old enough to where it's actually like, now we passing away. Yeah. We dying now. And it's just like, he was so young and, you know, so, you know, with such a great future ahead of him, it was like one of the hardest things to go to his funeral. Yeah. And obviously how many people he impacted and touched a lot of people there from his high school, obviously. A lot of people outside his high school, you know, Rising Suns came back. Mm-hmm. And it was just one of them things, man. I actually, you know, named my firstborn, Braylon, and made his middle name Keith after KJ. Wow. Because, you know, that was, that was my that was my partner. But that definitely hurt. That was one of them days, man. It just, it hurt. It definitely, yeah. it definitely hurt, man. So, um, 
because he 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 was a, a a great friend. You know, I would even call him my brother. You know, mm-hmm. we 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 spent some good times together. And you know, when when that happens, when stuff like that happens, man, it just lets you know, man, life is life is precious, yeah. man. You know, life is short. You never know. For real. Ne- you never know, man. Hard to make, easy to take. Yeah. Man. But so honestly. it was one of them things, man. But it definitely propelled me. You know, I pray every game. You know, for you know, my I call them my fallen angels. You know, and it started with KJ ever since. You know, he passed away every game. You know, I would like pray to him, watch over me. You know, make sure I walk off this field safe. And um. You know, obviously, there's a lot. You know, I lost, you know, some more. Yeah. Obviously, so every game, I'll pray to each one of them. You know, let them know the game. This game is for you, you know, and and I do that every time I step on the field. So That's major. Yeah. Even to heights like the Super Bowl, but we're yeah, going to get yeah. into that down the line. But, all right, so quickly, and you pretty much touched on football at U of A, but I want to talk about it a little further because – the funny thing is, bro, the first time I seen you play at U of A was against ASU. And I, I think y'all won by one point, or they might have beat y'all by one point. But I seen you, you must have hit them all once and you was talking some shit to them. <laughs> and I was just sitting there laughing. But um, what was your like um, biggest moment for you at U- University of Arizona? Um, You know, we had some big moments, but it would probably be that bowl game, man. We had, man, my junior year in New Mexico Bowl. Um. You know, when we were down 21, you know, we fought back. Then they went up like 18, and then we fought back and actually won by one point. And I was the MVP player of the game. Shy moment. It was just one of them one of them games that wasn't going our way, but we just kept fighting. And, you know, the plays that I was able to make to help the team win, I mean, it was just one of them things where, like, it was almost impossible. Yeah. We did the impossible when we come back. But you win. killed USC, though. Yeah, I killed USC. <laughs> you know, I like playing against USC because USC was one of them games where it was like, okay, Pops wanted me to go here. Yeah. You know, they get to talking all this shit every time we play them about how guys from Arizona didn't have offers to USC. Like, they just some super, like, and every time we play them, it's a close game anyway. So I don't yeah. know why they ever, they always post that. But I remember them posting, like, there was only two guys worthy of a USC offer, and it was, like, me and Kadeem Carey. Yeah. So I'm like, come on, bro. You ain't got to do all that. Yeah. So, you know, every time I play against SC, you know, you know, I knew, I knew some guys over there from when I went to visit. And, you know, it was fun playing against SC. So every time I played against SC, it was, like, an extra little, you know, extra little – Juice out there. One game, man. I don't know what year it was, but I know you get they asked big you had like two interceptions in yeah, the game. Yeah, that was that was two thousand twelve, man. Yeah. You know, and um I remember that game like that was that would be the next biggest game, okay. man, because they was number nine in the country, you know, they coming in here, you know, it's hot out there. You mm-hmm. we start playing, they talking about how Matt Liner's the number one pick or whatever yeah. and all that. You know, we just start playing football, and we, you know, we got after. Him. Or not, Matt Liner. Um, or um, Sam Darnold. No, no, not, it was it was it was a uh, before that. Um, I forgot. And it was Matt Liner, right? Nah, hell nah. no, Matt Liner came out like oh seven. Yeah, it was not Matt Liner. You know, um, I forget his name. Anyway, Matt Barkley. Oh, Matt Barkley. Barkley. Matt yeah. Barkley. Oh my, yeah, he was the biggest thing. Yeah. So you know, they they boosted Matt Barkley up, and you know, they talking about how that he gonna kill us, and we reading all this, how it's gonna be a blowout. They number nine in the country. Yeah. So you know, we got after them. You know, in college football, man, when you get wins like that, man, it just shake up the whole, the whole. You know, atmosphere. You know, um, so I had some pretty good wins. I would say against that USC team and then against that Oregon team the following year. Yeah, some good wins, man. So that's big. Now and it's funny because the next question, because my my friend Mark Lyons was actually playing basketball for U of A same year that yeah. that shit happened. But um, Arizona has such a huge basketball program, like nationally known, world known, probably like their basketball program is huge. So when you play football there, does it ever feel like like y'all competing against that? Because y'all years at U of A was the years y'all was probably like the best, so y'all probably got the closest. Like, so was there ever a competition between basketball and football? Like, no, nah, there wasn't no competition, man. A lot of people don't know I'm a huge basketball fan, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a Lakers diehard. Kobe Bryant was my favorite player. Um, rest in peace. So yeah, rest in peace. So. Um, when I went to U of A, the basketball program was definitely gonna be the reason why. Um, you know, people be like, You go you're going to a basketball school. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to a school, you know, that's good at basketball, so I go to some basketball games and enjoy it, you know. Um but U of A was, you know, there ain't even no point in competing with something like that. You know, you just, <laughs> you know, you represent it. You yeah. know, that's all you can do. You represent it because their basketball program is legit. And, you know, the football program, 
you know, it get up there, you know, and then they, they, they go down like they in rebuild right now. But it'll get up there yeah. again, you know, because we have some players, man. And U of A's always had players. Yeah, some very players, good players. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, I think people try to, you know, downplay that. Like the Teddy Bruschis, the, the Gronkowskis, yeah, the uh, Antonio Pierce. They did have some ballers, you know, come through U of A. You know, I know you don't want to compare to all these, but – for U of A, they so called a basketball school. You know, we got basketball guys out there, but yeah. I think it was just more like a family thing. Like you know, they let us go to the basketball games for free, so yeah. you know, we could enjoy that. You know, they went in. You know, um, they was good that year too. You yeah. said boy went Mark. Yeah, yeah he, he was the point good. guard. Yeah, yeah, he was balling. Um, they was good that year, and you know, um, way better than ASU, way better than all these other schools, you know. And basketball is a huge part, man, because I love basketball. I'm one of them guys who can't play basketball, but I love it. Yeah. You know, I love to watch it. I think it's a great sport. Um, and um, like I said, I was, I'm a diehard Lakers fan, and UCLA almost got me. Yeah. They said Kobe be in the gym practicing. <laughs> and they almost got me with that. And they said, they found out I was a Lakers fan. They was like, man, we get you down to the game. Stay with center. And I'm like, what? I was signed like, up just for that. Yeah. And I'm like, but I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm always be a Lakers fan. I can't let them get me like that. They almost got me. They would have got me. Yeah. That's almost, a fact. They almost got me. For I got sure. Lakers tattooed on my. I got it when I was young, though, yeah. but I covered it up because I was yeah. tripping. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a diehard, too. Like, I, I cried like a baby when, when yeah. Kobe died. But um, all right. So last uh thing, well, last two things on college. I'm sure this will be a short answer because uh you ain't got to go too crazy. But any wild college memories you can share with us or stories? Yeah, man, I ain't trying to get yeah, nah, house, yeah. put you out know, the house. Oh, lady, she was Marquise, like, come get your stuff <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, no, nah, I ain't got no wild college. We was good, and we went to class, and we went. And yeah. we, we well, shine a moment for that. All right. So this is the last thing on college. Any advice you would give? For a young college athlete right now, and do you think they should get paid to play? So I guess a double-ended question. I mean, just the advice I give them is just, you know, just, man, just stick with it. Um, there's going to be tough days. Man, get in that classroom and take advantage of the education. I know it's harder for us than regular students. I don't care what they say, you know, with the practice and you know, being tired and still having to do the same thing they got to do with the work, but get that education, man, and 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 just stick with it. Whatever your dream is, stick with it. You know, so keep chasing it. And absolutely, they should get paid for it, man, because they're putting their bodies on the line. Um, yes, sir. A lot of players don't make it to the league or to the professionals because they get hurt in college. Yes, sir. So they don't get that opportunity to, you know, live out their dream and their livelihood. Yes. So they should. I feel like they should get paid. You know, mm -hmm. and college has more money. They they got. Tons of money. Mm -hmm. They have tons of money they get paid, you know, so that it'd be nothing to pay them more. You know, I, I was in college, you know, I had my son, I was struggling, you know, me, them little checks per month wasn't doing nothing. I had to, I was going nice where I had to get my son food and I'll just go without eating, you wow. know. But now they kind of change it. They eat, um, they they allowed all, all what, year round meals or three meals a but day. But y'all didn't have year round we, meals? No, nah, we didn't have that when I was in college. You know, they couldn't feed us like that or it'd be a violation. So, I mean, they're making changes, but just pay them, man. Just pay yeah. the players, you know. And I know they well, we don't want to pay a guy higher than this, you know, the better player. But they use their likeliness all the time. Bring NCAA back, yeah. you know, and pay the players. I mean, it's crazy how greedy this world could be, man. I mean, these athletes, they are, they're on TV, you know, big-time players like Zion Williamson. Yeah. And he was in college. I mean, come on, man. You got to pay the players. You, you have enough to pay them, pay them. I think that um, just what, what California did, was it last year or this year? Or, um, I think yeah. everybody's going to have to follow mm -hmm. because I feel like that's just kind of like the precedent. The way It's usually the precedence is set by some a hub like California or New York or um, not even so much Texas, but like one of those places and everybody follows. You know what I'm saying? So I think just for that fact, obviously, they're going to see more kids start enrolling in schools in California just for that fact. But then it's going to be a trickle down effect. But it should have been happening. So I hope hopefully the athletes get some reparations or something like that. But um, all right, let's go into it, man. So um, now we're moving on up to the east side. You know what I mean? Even got his piece of the pie. Talk about draft day, man. How was that for you? And um, did you go where you was expecting or do you feel like you went later, earlier? And just give us the whole draft day experience for you. Draft day was the most nerve wracking. Uh, I wouldn't call it. The, it was it was nerve wracking. I wouldn't call it the most nerve wracking. I um when I came out as a senior, for some reason it was like a record breaking underclassman, you know, deal of how many underclassmen declare for the draft. Yeah. So I already knew I was about to get fucked over. Yeah. Or whatever. Um 
I thought I played well enough at Arizona to get invited to the Combine in Senior Bowl, but mm-hmm. obviously they wanted underclassmen at the Combine, dominated the Combine or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so right then I knew, okay, we already dealing with this shit, um, obstacles and all that, but, you know, we built for that. So, mm-hmm. you know, I just go to the Pro Day and show out. You know, I run a 4-4 at the Pro Day. I knew I was going to hey. run fast. If I'm at the Combine, that's like the second fastest time. By like 0.2 seconds. As a I linebacker. Ran, yeah, as a linebacker. So I might have would have ran faster just being at the combine. And then it would have raised eyebrows. You know, I did real good on the drill. So I actually got some good workouts. And, you know, I had teams calling me, you know, saying that I should have been at the, the the like I said, the combine in the senior bowl. Uh-huh. That's what kind of report they had on me. They, you know, they asked you questions like, why didn't you go? Like, you know, sometimes you can't control what, you know, other people do. You can't control yeah. that. I couldn't control if they didn't invite me to the pro, the uh, combine. I got snubbed. It, it is yeah. what it is. So, you know, draft day comes around. And, you know, it is what it is. I'm, you know, I'm kind of sitting there like, okay, I understand I'm not going to the first three rounds. Am I okay about it? No, I'm not okay with it. But it is, I can't control it, yeah. you know. I'm seeing guys going, you know, I'm happy for them. You know, that's what's up. The guys I train with, they going first round, they going that. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, you know, I'm just I'm just ready to go see what team I go to. Yeah. The team I thought I was going to was Miami Dolphins. Um, mm-hmm. The coach, linebacker coach, called me every day. He really liked me, liked what he saw on tape. He had plans for me. And he told me, you know, he going to do everything, you know, to get me drafted. You know, and at that time, you don't know how it works in there. So you're thinking, okay, that's where you're going. Yeah. I mean, I talk to him every day. Talk to him the most on draft day. You know, he was just like, you know, just stay ready, stay ready. So, you know, day three comes about when I'm projected. And anywhere from fourth to seven, you know, a team calls me, you know, the day before the draft and say, look, we got you on our board. You know, I don't know where everybody else got you, but we got you as high as fourth round. So you just be ready all day tomorrow. So I'm like, okay, that's the highest I didn't hear. Yeah. So we'll see. But the thing about the NFL, if you don't understand, it's a copycat league. Point blank, period. If they like a player and they know other teams like a player, but this team's not drafting the player, they're not going to draft the player. Yeah. They like something wrong with the player. Yeah. So they kind of going down like that. So we get to right round five. And I'm like, okay. I'm starting to get frustrated now because now I'm seeing guys that I know I play better. Yeah. Than. Hands down, know I play better than. Got better stats, man. They getting drafted, so I'm just like, you know, and I'm not, I'm not hating, hating yeah. guy. I'm good for them. Yeah, I don't hate like, them. I'm, I'm happy for them, but I'm kind of thinking to myself, like, what the fuck, bro? So I'm kind of sitting there. And I got my son in my hand, and you know, fifth round come, and you know, the Miami Dolphins is on the clock. So I'm like, okay, this might be it. I'm looking at the phone, like maybe they'll draft me and then call me. I don't know how it really works. So they draft a linebacker from like Montana. So I'm looking at that, and I'm now I'm hot. I'm pissed. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell? So um, I'll never get named Jordan Tripp. So I'm thinking to myself, like, there's no fucking way. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the, I got way more stats. I'm way more like, there, there's no way. So immediately the coach called me and my, my agent or whatever, and he's like, yo, he's like, uh, I was rooting for Marquise. I'm mad that I was supposed to be him. And, you know, this is a linebacker coach. And, you know, my agent's like, what the hell? I mean, come on, bro. Like, what, what are we doing? Yeah. And then he's like, the kid could play special team. Then he could long snap. That's what gave him the head. They wanted him. I want Marquise. He said, you just tell Marquise to be ready. We're going to try to get him with this next pick. And I'm I'm kind of like, I see how it works now. So I'm kind of, I'm hot. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Nah, Miami ain't fucking with me. Uh-huh. You know, whatever. I'm hot. So the – uh. The whole fifth round go, I see my my boy, my real close friend, Shaq Richard, he get drafted. We had a bet who was going to get drafted first. So he get drafted. So I'm happy for Shaq. He get drafted to Pittsburgh. And I'm like, mm-hmm. that's what's up, bro. You know, I sent him the bread, whatever. You know, I'm yeah. not a sore loser. I'm like, that's what's up, man. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm thinking, he like, you next, whatever. And I'm thinking, I'm you know, I'm thinking I'm coming up next, whatever. Still nothing. So then they start the sixth round. He gets like the middle of the sixth round. Still nothing. So now I got teams calling me saying, yo, we used all our picks, but we would like for you to come as a free agent. So then my agent called me like, it's better to go as a free agent now. So I'm like, damn, I'm really not going to get drafted. I got some family over. I ain't have no big, big party, but yeah. I just got family over. So, you know, I don't, you know, the biggest thing about me is like, if I'm mad at something, the thing that makes me even more mad when people be like, hey, man, you all right? You mad? Yeah. Like, you all right? You all right? So yeah. I'm kind of like, man, I just hope they just leave me alone. I got my son in my hand. So I turn the TV off like, man, fuck it. I ain't watching that shit. So I call my agent. I'm like, look, man, I'm not going. I'm going anywhere but Miami. Yeah. I'm like, fuck. They call, try to get me to go there for a free agent. I'm not going. They was like, well, look, we can run the price up because you're going to be the, you know, a high priority free agent. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, I ain't even worried about it. I'm just ready to play football. So, Lovey Smith called me. 
and I'm on the phone with Lovey Smith. And he right, he coached for Tampa Bay. So yeah, he's the old me, Bears coach. Yeah, he's telling me, you know, I have, I have went down there and visited, and I had talked to Lovey personally. So he's telling me like, look, we used all our picks on offense. So I go look. I'm like, okay, they used all their picks on offense. He's not lying, yeah. you know, so I can't even really be mad at that. They didn't take nobody from defense. It's literally six picks on offense. They only had six. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So he like, I want you to come down here as a free agent. You know, we'll talk to your, to your uh, agent. We'll get the numbers down. Because usually free agents only get like 5000 I think they was going to give me like twenty five or something yeah. like that. They was going to give me, they was going to up the price for me. Uh-huh. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, you know, I'm talking to Lovey. I'm like, okay, I kind of got a good feel for Tampa. So I hang up the phone. You know, Colts is calling me. All these other teams is calling me. And, you know, I answer the Colts. they like, we want you to come down here as a free agent. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I still got to decide. He's like, yeah, man. It was like, don't worry about it. A lot of guys make it out here and all this. They're saying they, all the teams that use their picks up. So, man, I turn the TV off. So I'm on the phone with my agent. Like, you know, tell Tampa I'm coming down to Tampa. Negotiate the numbers, whatever. I'm I'm going to Tampa. Yeah. Tell my I'm not fucking with Miami, whatever. I'm mad, right? So then I get another phone call. I'm like, these teams keep calling me. So I answer. I'm like, hello. Just thinking it's another, you know. Oh, I had told Lovey Lovey Smith. I had called Lovey Smith. I like, yo, I'm coming to Tampa. You know, I'm like, I'm telling them like, I'm coming to Tampa. Like after the draft, I'm, I'm probably gonna go to Tampa. Like I'm probably gonna come, you know, out there. So then I'm like, hold on, coach. I'm like, somebody on my other lines, probably just, you know, team saying a free agent deal. So I say hold on or whatever i click over and it's marvin lewis mm-hmm. so he like is this marquise and i'm like yeah he like congratulations and i'm like congratulations for what he's like we're drafting you right now and i look and i'm like oh shit the tv off so i'm like I hurry up and turn the tv on and i'm like i'm like they you know bangle six round and as much as i was mad and frustrated yeah. about going six round once he said i was drafting you like all that shit just went out the window. Yeah. i was uh like instantly happy you know yeah. <laughs> and i was just like you know i'm getting drafted they finna call my name i talked to the linebacker coach i have you know went and visit them too so it was like a surprise i didn't expect them to draft me um, but when they drafted me, I was like, okay, you know, and I was happy, you yeah. know, and I was like, well, damn, I had told Tampa I was coming out there, all that shit, they get it, you know, uh-huh. didn't even talk to them no more, so I'm like, damn, I get to, you know, go play for, you know, the Bengals, mm-hmm. you know, you know, I got, I went in there, threw my Bengal stuff on for my visit, you know, I'm happy, I'm a Bengal now, you know, I'm talking to Nick And Vontez was there too, right? Vontez was yeah. there, yeah, Vontez was there, Pac-Man Jones was there, these dudes, that, you know, Pac-Man, Taylor Mays was there, yeah. so That's I'm crazy. like, yeah, that shit, I'm like, so this shit, wow. So, you know, I got drafted there. So, I mean, nothing beats that experience of just getting drafted. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. I was hot. You know, obviously, I feel like I still should have went higher. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, but at the end of the day. If Jordan Tripp went from Montana. <laughs> yeah, you know, there was a whole bunch of guys. And that's, not, that's nothing against no, that Jordan good. Tripp. But, I mean, good for him. But there, there, there was a whole bunch of that's guys. That's my views. Yeah, my views. <laughs> you know, when they start drafting a guy, you know, I, would, I would remember seeing it. They draft a guy in the third round. You could barely see the tape. And they're like, yeah, this guy has so much potential. And I'm just sitting here like, what the hell do I got then? <laughs> I actually went there making plays against, you know, big-time college, big-time yeah. players. I said, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the highlight tape of these guys that you're showing in the first round, second round. But I'm getting drafted away down here so that kind of showed me how it goes you yeah. know media hype is big oh yeah in the media league. running yeah. yeah media running i wasn't a real media guy so but i mean regardless man it was like okay i'm here yeah you know i go out to cincinnati you know end up being there for three years again didn't go how i really wanted to go i feel like i really could have helped that team yeah. just with my speed Line up next to Tez. You feel you like know. the injury kind of um, derailed, like the second Nah, season. it was just one of them things, man. I'm not even going to lie to you, man. Marvin Lewis, whatever, for every reason, he just didn't feel like I was, you know, worthy enough to play on the defense. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you yeah. know, one thing about me is you can keep it real with me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm a man first, so mm-hmm. you can come tell me I don't think you're good enough. I want to hear it just like that. I don't want to hear the sugar coat, oh, you're doing good and all that. Yeah. Straight up, so... Right, right then I was I was on some shit like I don't you know Cincinnati like you know I kind of start talking talking shit trying to get them to make a move because I actually asked them to trade me or release me because I'm like, I can help a team win yeah like you know I'm shit I'm blazing out there I'm probably one of the fast linebacker if not the fast linebacker yeah. in the league on a team and I'm literally just running down on kickoff and at the time I didn't value special teams like I should have. And I became a great special teams player. They had a great special teams coach, and I became a good special teams player. I really did. Um, I had yeah. double digit tackles. I think it was my third year after my injury. But they just had no intentions of playing me. Yeah. You know, it got to a point where, you know, we blowing the team out, 
and they take all the starters out and put all young guys in except for me. Yeah. So now it's like, come on, man. So man. it's like, I right, bet. You know, now it's, now we didn't cross the line. So now it's like, let me get out of here. Yeah. You know, let me go somewhere else. They need to get the opportunity. Most of the time, it is just opportunity. It's just opportunity. You just find a coach. A lot of guys, that's what a lot of people don't understand about the NFL, man. A lot of guys out there who's playing, just there's a coach who believes in them. Yep. A coach who likes and believes in them. It's not always about, you know, that's what I have to learn about the NFL. It wasn't about no real competition. Yeah, man. the best. You know, or, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I went out there and I bought every year. You know, for mm-hmm. them, you know, regardless of what they try to say, did I make mistakes? Absolutely, everybody did. Yeah. You know, but I went out there and showed and flashed and showed some good stuff, man. And I'm telling you, them years in Cincinnati, I think I was probably, I felt the fastest. Yeah. And I was telling somebody that the other day, I mean, I was running 21.87 miles per hour as a linebacker. So I'm, I, I, I'm talking about, I'm topping the league. I know they was Get raving pulled over about the school zone. Yeah, <laughs> they was over there raving about the Ryan Shaziers and Tevin Smith. Yeah. But I, you know, I'm over there like, bro, I'm moving over here. Yeah. Like, they, I probably, you know, hands down, I'm, I'm, I don't back down from no channel, I but I didn't want to say that because they out there playing, you know. Yeah. I don't want to be that guy that's like, man, I'm fashion, y'all, but I ain't got nothing to show for yeah. it because I'm just running down, you know, on kickoff. And, you know, again, you know, I didn't value it like I should have, but, you know, I still made some good plays. You know, I spent three years in Cincinnati, and I was just so young and didn't really know how the business worked, but I was just so mad at Cincinnati yeah. until I left and really found out how the business worked. Then I kind of was like, okay. I'm not as mad at Cincinnati. Do I still yeah. think I should have played? Absolutely. I could have helped the team win. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's all I wanted to do. I wasn't saying I should be a starter. I wasn't saying I should be telling you how to. I was just saying I could help the team win. Yeah. So, you know, when I asked for that trade, they really didn't grant it. I asked for it really for two years. And, you know, and they were always going to all season and get a linebacker that I felt like didn't yeah. make no sense. You know, they would get a linebacker that's kind of, older and then they just bring them in and automatically start them so it was one of the things where it was like come on man like you know they getting draft picks they drafting third round linebackers every year you know they got the right away before me because i'm six round i'm in the system so it was one of the things like yeah i gotta get out of here you know because they not you know i had other players even telling me like yo why do they don't play you you know i'm just like man i don't know man they you know they was telling me older veteran players like man you got to get out of here like, you yeah. got to, they not, they don't mess with you. You got to get out yeah, of here. Yeah, you got to go. So, that being said, I just told my agent, let, and tell them, let me go. They didn't do it. And I'll never forget, they had me playing in the fourth quarter. And I like playing. I like playing preseason. Yeah. You know, because uh, they be thinking it's an insult for guys playing the fourth quarter. They so silly, man. That's where all the guys that's going to be the next stars of the league is at. Yeah. It's the fourth quarter guys in the preseason game, man. The, the unhidden gems, they, they, I mean, it's really some good dudes out there that be that you play against. So I don't mind playing the four preseason games and all that. So I just, I like playing football. Yeah. You know, all these dudes is here for a reason. You know, they all good players. So I remember I was playing and we playing against Kansas City. And I remember, you know, they had a guy get hurt at safety and they had no more safeties. I've been in the system so long, I'm like, I could go play safety. Yeah. It was like, can you go play middle safety? I was like, I could go play, I could go play middle safety. That's I'm crazy. Sure. They probably, they were like, they probably just going to run it. I said, don't matter. I can play middle safety. I've been in the system so long. So I go out there and I play middle safety. And it was like, at first, it was like one of them things. It was like, dang, they put Marquise out there at safety. And they like, they really don't mess with him. You know, yeah. you can hear some teammates saying that. But I had one teammate that was really smart. His name is Vinny Ray. He was really smart. I know like, that man. is. Yeah. yeah, he like, man, this is this is a good opportunity for you. Because you about to show your athleticism. And he was like, don't listen to all that other stuff. He was like, this is a good opportunity for you. And for the first time in my career, I feel like it was a good opportunity. Because for some reason, right when I went out there, the guy, you know, I run the wrong way down the alley. He does a cutback. You know, one of the players was contained. And he runs down the field like 50 yards. Wow. So I'm running down. Dude is already breaking. I turn around and he running down, running back. Supposed to be like four, 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 three, whatever, four, four. And I go get him. You hawk him. I hawk him. I walk him <laughs> down. And then everybody was like, man, y'all see Marquise on the next day. You know, deep, deep scoring was like, that's a hell of a play you made out of the middle field to go get that guy. So I'm like, okay. And, you know, when the uh, offensive coaches, and one thing about Cincinnati, man, the defensive coaches I was always frustrated with, but the offensive coaches was always cool. Man. Yeah. I always got much respect for them because they used to tell me I used to go against A.J. Green on them uh-huh. and try to get better. And they used to, you know, watch me out there. And they used to come, you know, he saw when the offensive coaches saw me, Coach Urban, he saw me, you know, I was frustrated. He came and sat down next to me during the game. He was like, you know, you show flashes and whatnot, but you got to keep your head up and don't let it bother you and affect you for, you know, this is a business, you know, maybe for your next team. Yeah. You know, he just talks some knowledge True. to me. 
So after I did that, he was like, that's what I'm talking about. See, so when I walked in the building, my linebacker coach told me, I, you know, there was three teams to try to trade for me. So I'm thinking to myself, like, okay. I'm like, who? You know, he told me the teams. And I'm like, and y'all said no to all of them? He's like, we're not trading you. I was like, why? Y'all don't play me. You know, yeah. I'm kind of like, like, if y'all not going to play me, like, let me go. Yeah. So, um, so uh, after he said that, I'm like, man, whatever. So we go play the Redskins on Sunday night. Or a Sunday primetime game on preseason. I play, you know, okay game. Still thinking to myself, these dudes, these dudes ain't going to play me. Like, am I going to be here or not? Like, I wasn't thinking about getting. I was just thinking about, I already asked for a release or trade, so I'm ready for whatever. Um, Marvin calls me. And, you know, he tells me, you know, come into the office. And, you know, I'm like, should I bring my stuff? Am I getting cut? Y'all finally granted mine because we had total begin. Yeah. I told my agent to tell him again I want to release or trade. He was like, nah, you know, we're actually trading you. So... I'm like, oh, for real? I'm like, okay. I'm like, who you trading me to? I'm thinking he going to say a team that my coach mentioned, like team on the West Coast, something like that. Yeah. And then when he said it, he said the Patriots. I kind of said that, like, oh, shit. Like, I said, oh, shit, I'm fine. Oh, yeah. The Patriots. I didn't even know they was interested. I didn't even know anything. So I'm like, so I go down there, and, you know, I talked to Marvin Lewis for one last time, and it was like one of them things where, you know, you'd be like, I want out, I want out, I'm mad, I want out. But when you sit down and talk to him for the last time, it's like, damn, I'm really going. You know, Marvin's like, you know, we going to miss you over here yeah. or whatever. And I'm kind of thinking to myself, like, I could have been here. I could have been playing. Yeah. But it is what it is. You know, it, it felt real. You know, yeah. it felt like he really, you know. Nah, you know. You especially know. when you deal yeah. with, like, when you grow up the way you grow up, you deal with a thousand people telling you this, telling you that. You, you, people can't lie to you after a certain right. point. So, you know what I'm saying? So it felt, it, it felt G. So, you know, D.C., you know, shook me up and was like, thank you for everything. You know, now I feel like the asshole, yeah. kind of like, damn, you know, I was over here pressuring, feeling like they was disrespecting me and stuff. But I go to New England, and, you know, it's a whole different road over there. Oh, that's big, From man. locker room. I got to stop you right yeah. here. I don't, yeah, we, yeah. Got, we ain't going to go too far yeah. in that because I want to get on to all that. Yeah. But um, before I do, one quick question. So when you first get in the league, what's the overall difference in intensity, just intensity only from college to the pros? It's, it's the best of the best, um, you know. Same thing, it, it goes up a notch from high school. You know, you was probably, you know, you would see like one or two good players out yeah. there. Like, hey, these dudes is legit, they real. Then you go to college, and it and it's like, okay, now you see like on off, it might be three or four good players on each side. And NFL is like all the, the best players from everywhere together now. It's Every, the best yeah. of the best. You know, and, and the, everything's amplified. Without speed. you even having to do nothing. The speed of the game is faster because these dudes is fast. Yeah. They faster. The speed of the game is fast. The, the 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 playbook is not complex, but it's more, you know, it's more, I don't even know how to say it. It's, it's just you got to do your job. Yeah. One little minute, like the quarterback going to get it there. You yeah. know, quarterbacks, all the quarterbacks is good. It's not, mm-hmm. no, this quarterback's not that good. They're all good. Yeah. Everyone's good, man. Receivers is good. You know, you got the A.J. Green. You got the little slot, the fast dude. So it's like. You got to be on your P's and Q's. Like, you miss a hole, they hitting the hole. Yeah. You know, the lineman <laughs> is bigger. It's not no, well, they're, this side of the line is big, this side of the line not that yeah. big. Like, they all big. You know, they all big, they all strong, they all good. So, it was just bigger, stronger, faster. That yeah. was the biggest thing about the league. Um, when I first got in there, it was, everything was moving fast. Yep. But then as you eventually do it, it slows down and you're moving fast now. Gotcha. You know, so it's still every, it still will slow down. And I was fast, so it helped me out. You know, but, I mean... Them hamstrings were sore every day, and you know it was it was it was a different world. And, you know, you was a little bit more sore every day, yeah. even after practice in the NFL. It tripped me out because as a fan, like when I was young, I felt like college looked way faster. But then I realized when I got older, it looked faster because everybody in the NFL is fast, yeah. so it makes it look like slow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um, all right. But one thing that I did want to say because you touched on it, I think the scariest things about like those organizations is that they all work together. So it'd be like you get into some shit in L.A. New York don't want to fuck with you because they all go to lunch together every. You know what I mean? At these owner meetings and like it, this shit, all they do it's a boys' club. You're a billionaires' boys' club. But um, one thing I want to talk about before we go on the Patriots because 2017, I want to say it was 2017 if I remember correctly, but um. One of my good friends, who was one of your best friends, um, passed away, Danica Green. But uh, one thing about Danica that I wanted to touch on was um, she was one of the most gangster people I ever met in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want somebody to keep it straight with you, this the person that's going to do it. You know, and I didn't even know that y'all was good friends because this how much she didn't really talk about none of her outside life. You know what I mean? Until I seen you at the funeral and things like that. So I kind of wanted you to touch on your relationship with her and um, just, you know, however you can uh, honor her really quickly. 
Oh uh, man, Donica was my good friend, man. You know, you don't got a lot of female friends. You know, well, at least I don't. You know, but Donica was one. You know, one of my true best friends. I met her at Millennium High School. She went to Millennium. You know, freshman year, sophomore year, she was actually my super fan with my girlfriend and I. I'm a different girlfriend at a time. So I used to go to her house before games. We used to watch Sister Sister, clown around. <laughs> you know, she was she was my dog. You know, what I'm saying we used to hang out all the time. You know. Um, around school, you know, she's always be with us. She was just like one of them people that she could hang out with. You know, even if I was with the fellas, Donica would be right there. Yeah, Donica was liked by everyone, real cool, real quiet, like you said. But real, she was quiet. But at the same time, when she opened up, she opened up. You yeah, know what I mean, she was, you know, she she was around us. She was herself. You know, goofy. And you know, my girlfriend at the time now know her two real good friends with her. She played on the basketball team with her. Mm-hmm. So you know. When that, you know, you get that call, you know, I talk to Donica a lot, too, you know. Yeah. She used to call me all the time, ask me how I'm doing. She used to write me. She said she want to come to a game. I used to tell her, you know, I got you, you know. Yeah. You're my dog. I got you. Um, you know, I know she had lived, I think, Chicago for a while yeah. at one time. And then she was doing the podcast thing. And it was funny to me when she said she was doing the podcast thing because I'm like, Donica, you so quiet. Like, you never really opened up. So if you're doing a talk radio talk, I'm like, I can't see that. Yeah. I'm like, but, you know, she's like, can you be on it? Can I shout you out? And I'm like, yeah, go ahead. And, you know, she sent me the video of her shouting me out. And I'll never forget. I watched it and I kind of smiled. And, you know, my best friend, Marquise Flowers, when she said it like that. And I'm like, Donica's so goofy, man. But that's my, yeah. you know, that's my... That's my dog. So when, you know, I got the call that, you know, she was actually had gotten into a car accident. She was on life support. It was just, it was tough, man, because I went to go see her at the hospital. And it was just like, uh, you know, I hate to see her like that. Obviously, you know, we talked about everything. I mean, I remember I went to her, um, her house. You know, her grandpa's house. We watched the Lakers when they was in the championships. You know, when Ron Artest hit the three, we was at the house all together. She was a huge Lakers fan. Huge Lakers fan like me. We was all Lakers fan. Her cousin JR. So we hung out like that a lot of times, going to watch Laker games. She's called me about Kobe or text about Lakers. So, you know, Donica was, you know, Donica was my road dog, man. It was, again, when you hear something like that, it's like, ugh, it's in, you're in denial. Yeah. You know, and the first thing I did, I went to her, her Twitter and I wrote her on Twitter, wrote her a message because I'm like, you're going to get through this. You know, and I still feel like she would have got through, man. Yeah. But um, I was like, you going to get through this because you a fighter, you a survivor. We're going to laugh about this one day. You know, I wrote it, sent it to her and whatnot. You know, I went to go back. I saw pictures of me and her when I was a high school American when they came down to school. You know, we had pictures we was taking together. She was there. One, you know, she was a good friend. She yeah. was there. They did after school, so a lot of people didn't go, but Donica was there. Yeah. So, Sorry, you know, man. yeah, that's that That was Donica for you. You know, she was always, you know, she was a great friend, always there if you needed her there and, and, and whatnot, man. So, you know, when they called me and told me they, they was actually going to make the decision to pull the plug and, you know, she probably wasn't going to make it, you know, that was hard. Yeah. You know, that, that was hard and that hurt because, you know, all the good times we had with Donica, man, and it goes further than just me. You know, um, she's really um, my girlfriend right now. You know, my girlfriend one day going to be wife. She she was really good friends with Donica, too. So, I mean, it was just a no-brainer, you know. And after we, I lost Donica, man, I all the good stuff happened with football. And it was just like I felt like she was a part of that. Yeah. You know, her and KJ, I prayed to them every game, you know, with all the other people that I lost. And, um you know, it was just like one of them things where I feel like Donica was just saying, hang on, Keith, you yeah. know, it's going to it's gonna turn around. Because the last time the conversation we had, and I told her about this day, she was telling me, you're going to be all right. It's going to turn around because, you know, you, we know you could play. So um, I named my daughter, actually, my last daughter I had, you know, last year. Um, had her in August during training camp. I named her um, after Donica, too, her middle name, you know, Zaya. And then yeah. Donica's middle name, Glenice. So yeah. my daughter named Zaya Glenice. You know, I got Braylon Keith and Zaya Glenice. So um, I named them after her. We named them after our friends, you know, and, you know, close when we watched. Now I can't wait to tell her about Donica one day when she get older. Um, but yeah, man, Donica was definitely, you know, definitely my angel. I got a picture of her at my house with her and KJ on it, actually, you know, wow. as my guardian angel. So, um, it was just one of the moments, man, that, you know, again, you sit there and you think, man, life is, is short, man. It's precious, man. Cause Donica it was 25, won. man. Yeah, 25. And Donica was talking to me about finding a guy, getting married, having kids. She was crazy, you know, talking about how I had a kid. She wanted to see my kids yeah. and all that. So it was just one of them things, like, you couldn't believe it. Yeah. And, you know, no one could believe it, like, not Donica, you know. And um, it was just, man, it was just one of them things, man. So... You know, 
Yeah, no, nah, I mean, you ain't got to touch yeah. too much. I mean, yeah. rest in peace, yeah. like, baby girl, I hope you and Kobe found each other. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, man, because she was a huge, huge Lakers fan, man. Yeah. So, you know, Donica, we used to always talk about the Lakers and all that. So, you know, and um, and I'm just not, me personally, man, I'm not, I'm, I'm an emotional guy, but I'm not really an emotional guy. You know, that's just how I was raised and yeah. how Pops raised me always on me. So, like. Me going to that funeral was tough because when I go to funerals, I don't really cry. Yeah. You know, so I think of it like it's a celebration of life. I tell people all the time, you know, if I, you know, if something happened to me and I pass away, don't cry because you know I, I had a great life. I was blessed. Yeah. You know, so it was a, it's a celebration of life. Obviously, we gonna miss the hell out of that person. You know, but you know, the day I see Donica again, man, you know, it's gonna be crazy, man, because yes, that's my dog, her KJ. You know, they'll be waiting for me. So yeah. that's all I always think about that. But I always pray to them before every game. You know, and um. You know, I go out there, you know, and, 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 and go lights yeah. out. Nah, and it was a big time in your life, like you said, man, because overall, and this is, like, almost for perspective. So, like, I don't know how you would feel about yourself being yourself, but me looking from an outside perspective, like, being in the NFL and all that, that's one thing. But playing for the Patriots, <laughs> that's like being on the Bulls in the 90s, you know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, you can name, like, Randy Brown, John Paxson, like, <clears throat> Luke Long, people from the Bulls who people wouldn't even say was a super integral part. Like, and you actually were getting sacks, I mean, I, you know, killing shit in the playoffs. Like, you was really turning up for the Patriots and, like, really a part of that lore doing the Belichick way and all that. So, kind of describe, like, your time with the Patriots. And then um, after that, we'll talk about the Super Bowl specifically. But describe your time because that's, that's big. That's something nobody can ever take away from you. You know what I mean? And I'm not even a big organizational person. I'm more into the players. But yeah. truthfully, when you step into that, that's like the Spurs, the Lakers, the Bulls, the 90s, the Yankees. You know what I'm saying? So how was that experience in your life? Oh, man, it was it – was, it, was, it turned out to be, man, one of the best ones. You know, but at the time, you know, I didn't know. You know, I was nervous. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm getting traded. I'm like the Patriots. I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't know – why they trade for me, you know, I'm thinking to myself, there's no way. But then, you know, I'm getting nervous. I'm like, damn, you know, I'm about to go play for Belichick. You know, we talking about one of the greatest coaches ever. Yeah. You know, Coach Billy OG, that's what I call him. You know, he's been doing it for a long time. And, um, you know, going to play with Tom Brady. And I'm like, man, this is crazy, you know. So I'm like, the Patriots, they stay winning. But, you know, the Patriots got the reputation when you win and you good. You know, everybody, like, they cheaters, they cheaters. Yeah. You know, we tired of the Patriots and whatnot. So I'm like, I know I'm finna hear all that shit. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I don't care. You know, so I go to the Patriots. And from the Bengals to the Patriots, like, a culture shock. It's like, it's completely, it's night and day. Yeah. And that ain't no disrespect to the Bengals. But it's Elaborate just, a little bit. Like, yeah, strict. It's, it's night and day. I mean, strict. Strict is one thing, but it wasn't really as strict, you know. I think, you know, Belichick just got that reputation because how he used, you know, how he used to be really on him. But the the player leadership in the Patriots was night and day from the Bengals. Yeah. Now, again, that's no disrespect to the Bengals. That's just something like the Patriots. Like when I first got there and I'm walking to the meeting room, I see all these guys putting their phones on the floor. I'm like, what the fuck y'all doing? They're like, nah, bro, we don't take our phones in the meeting. Coach didn't tell him that. No one told him that. That's just them doing that. Yeah. That's the Dante Hightowers, the Matthew Slaters, mm -hmm. you know, just doing that, leading by example. Then you got Coach Bill coming there, and he like, all right, Matthew, come talk to the team. He want to talk to the team, you know. Then I see Slater come up, you know. He just talking to the team, like conversation. But he leading the team. Like, look, guys, like, we got to do this better. We got to do this better. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, mm -hmm. these are players talking to other players, yeah. and everybody's listening, mm -hmm. you know. And then Coach Bill come up there and say what we need to do and all that. But it was just one of them things, man. It was like, you know, my first week there, you know, Bengals got a reputation. So, you know, when I come from the Bengals, they like, oh, he came from the Bengals. You know, they had a couple of players from the Bengals yeah. on the team already. So, you know, they was kind of telling me, you know, I remember Rex Burkhead wrote me like, hey, man, don't be fighting out here because, you know, Bill don't play that. Because, you know, back in the Bengals, they practice. Somebody fuck with me. I used to fight. Yeah. Like, you know, all tops. You know, Bonte, we all used to, you know, yeah. just get down. So, um, I'm like, nah, man, I ain't going to do that. You know, I'm, I'm not like that. I'll just, you know, that's just what you do with the Bengals. I'm like, I'm, I'm different. So, uh, I get out there and I'm just like, it's just, it's, it's, it's different, man. Mm -hmm. You know, First practice, I'm thinking to myself, like, is this how these dudes practice? Like, it's harder. Yeah. It's physical. It's more physical. It's, you know, so now I'm got to up so my So more energy. physical, but no fights. Oh, no, no. And no, I ain't no, even want to cut you out, but no, that's that's discipline right there. But, they, you know, you know what? They don't fight out there because they don't fight out there because they play 
you know, they they're family. Yeah. You okay, know, and gotcha. I'm, I mean, they're gonna get into it. There's yeah. times they're gonna get into it, but Bills, you know, he had sent them to the locker room. It was more like the NFL, like, you know, you get fined now, you get fine. Like stuff like that. And I'm not gonna say they they're they they're angels or nothing. Nah, they they're still, you know, they they players. They just dudes who like to play, love to play football. Mm-hmm. They practice hard. It's the it's the way they practice, they in in the, the culture they build off winning. Mm-hmm. They wanna do it hard and they're gonna do it right. So so I'm out there and I'm just like, now I gotta up my ends because these dudes is practicing hard. Like, yeah. you know, linemen coming on trying to knock my block off. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I never forget after practice. I'm sitting there and in my locker. I'm like, damn, that shit was, I'm thinking, that shit was hard. Yeah. Like, you know, then we ran heels afterwards. I'm like, that shit was kind of oh, hard. Man. So I'm like, I'm thinking, you know, it's still training camp. And, you know, so I remember Shaq Mason coming up, like, what's up, bro? And I'm like, what's up? And I was like, I practice like that every day. He's like, every day. <laughs> he was like, he was like, you think that's hard? He said, it ain't going to get easier. He said, it's just going to keep getting harder. So wow. I'm like, damn, for real? But, man, it was one of the best ones because, you know, I'm sitting in there and, you know, Tom come up and he like, what's up? You know, I'm Tom. Yeah, Tom. I'm Brady. like, duh, nigga. Like, what's up, bro? I'm like, you know, duh, you Tom. I'm like, yeah, I'm Mark He's like, man, I'm glad we got you, man. Good to have you here. And I'm like, word. Yeah. I'm thinking to myself, like, damn, Tom coming up saying stuff like that? No, he didn't even have to. Yeah. Then you got... Dante Hightower coming. Then you got Matthew Slayer coming. Like, hey, man, you know, welcome to the team. Yeah. Nice. So they make you feel like, and I'm like, okay, these dudes Beautiful. is, you know, they make you feel like, you know, you're supposed to be here. Yeah. It's not like, oh, you got to get in where you fit in. Like, you know, some teams, you know, yeah. we all grown men. You know, I'm not saying you got to do that. Yeah. But then some teams would just be like, you know, we got a new player. They won't really talk to till later on. They're like, okay, yeah, we'll talk to them. Mm-hmm. And then you go into the equipment room and everybody treated you know, the thing about the Patriots that I love the most is everybody was treated the same way, man. Yeah. You know, they treated everybody like they were somebody, you know, with the Patriots, man. And I'm a guy like that. You know, I say hi to the front date, to, to uh, the, you know, the ladies at the front yeah, desk. Yeah, Let them know, hello, you know, how are y'all doing today? I like to talk to everybody, you know, just yeah. be polite. And that's what the Patriots was all about. You know, hey, you gonna respect everybody. You know, Bill made it known. We gonna respect everybody around the cookers, the workers, and they was all respectful. Man, it was just it was just such a crazy experience. Yeah. And then, like you said, man, I'm there. And actually, the first week there, you know, <laughs> I had Coach Flores, and a lot of people don't know, man. Coach Flores, funny dog. He a funny guy, mm. but he's serious. He a funny serious guy. <laughs> so when our first week there, we got into it. You know, because he 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 want to put on special teams. And he wanted to start kind of, you know, talking. And I, and I made a comment that I thought was funny. He didn't think it was funny. So he kind of got mad. You know, he started trying to, you know, in my opinion, show me up. That's how I felt at the time. Yeah. You know, I'm coming from the bank. He's like, this dude, he telling him, like, this dude still, he got that Bengals mentality. He's still, this dude ain't ready. Like, he's, we, we trying to whip him out of shape. And he talking like, you know, he, he better get right or he going to be out of here. So, you know, I'm thinking, you know, like I said, when I get mad, you know, I'm, uh, yeah. Westside, me, I'm like, look, bro, <laughs> right, you ain't talking, you ain't nothing but thing. Get me out of here. You know, I'm mad now. Yeah. So we kind of go back and forth. You know, I get mad. He's, you know, he, he, you know, him, he like, I'm from Brooklyn. You know, I'm, I'm from West Phoenix. What's yeah. up, bro? Yeah. Like, so I stand up. And then, and then you know, uh, you know, the player ground, like, oh, you can't be doing that. Now. That's, that's the linebacker coach. So I'm thinking to myself, like, I ain't never going to play now. Yeah. You know, I left, I left the, the Bengals and I'm still on that bullshit. So I had to go look in the mirror. You know, we had a talk the next day, Coach Flo, and, you know, after that, me and Coach Flo, they should actually became really, you know, yeah. really, really good, you know, because I understood him, he understood me now, and it was more like, you know, he he, he knew I was just, you know, he, he said, you know, you got to let that go, and, you know, you got to, you know, you just work, and I put my head down that week, and I worked, and I'll never forget, I won practice player of the week oh. for the look team, going against Tom there when I was making plays, I was just so frustrated, yeah. so mad. And then I say, you know, I started playing, and then, you know, guys started getting hurt, you know. And Matt Patricia, that's when he came to us, and, you know, he came to me and another guy. I was like, look, you guys can play, but I'm not going to put you out there until I know what you know what you're doing. I believe in you, but you got to show me you know what you're doing. How do you do that? And, you know, he told us. You know, he broke it down to us. He actually talked to us. Yeah. Like, other, you know, when I was with Bengals, they weren't doing that. They were yeah. just throwing other guys in there when they felt was good. Sink or swim. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They was just throwing, you know, they was going right above you, throwing the guys. Patriots were actually making me go out there and practice. Like, Bill, like, put more keys out there. I want to see what he do against the one. So, I'm like, okay, they got plans for me. So, you know, we go out there, and eventually, you know, I start playing. So, I think my first game, I play a little bit. You know, the coach come to me straight up the night before the game. He like, you're going to be the third down linebacker this week. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, really? I'm thinking to myself, all right, let's wait till the week get here. I don't really believe nothing. So, you know, we go we go to uh, Denver. We play Denver. I get a couple snaps. 
I'm guarding Jamal Charles out of the backfield. I'm playing, get a PBU. Mm-hmm. Now I'm kind of like, man, I'm actually playing out here. I'm actually playing on defense. Now yeah. I'm like, wow, you know, my guys from the Bengals sending me tape after the week. Like, Keith, is that you on the field? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, now <laughs> we turned up. So now we go to, to Oakland, and, I, and they like, I'm, I'm the third down linebacker, dime linebacker, and that's my shit. Yeah. I love third. I'm a, I'm a damn good dime linebacker, third down linebacker. So they put me out there. So we playing the Raiders, and I'm, you know, the coach telling me, you know, you don't get like 15 snaps, whatever. So I remember we go play the Raiders. We start whooping the Raiders' ass. Mm-hmm. Like, wasn't expecting. We start whooping their ass. Yeah. So now, every time I look to the sideline, the coach is calling the dime defense. So I'm like, damn, I'm supposed to only play 15 snaps. I'm at like snap 30 in Mexico. Yeah. I force a fumble, and I'm just, I just. Oh, remember, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I force a fumble, and then I just remember after that, it was just like one of them things, like, yo, you know. And the thing about the Patriots that made it so good, it really wasn't no static over there. Yeah. There was no hating over there, man. Mm-hmm. They was happy for everybody who got on the field and made a play from offense to defense. Didn't matter, man. Yeah. They was happy for you. You know, if it was a guy that was in your position, he was happy. So you don't really see that around the league. You know, some guys go to the coaches like, why am I not playing? Why am I not playing? Over there, it was more like, we win it. There's a team. Yeah. We a team over here. We win it. He doing his thing, like I'm getting res, like and then we then we go out, I come out, they go in. So it was like, man, it was like a, a team thing, you know. And it was, and the best thing about that season, what a lot of people don't understand, is like there were so many people, you know, we lost Dante Hightower for the season. So there was a lot of guys out there that other teams didn't want. Mm-hmm. So there was guys that was out there trying to prove themselves to, to other teams that they weren't good enough. They was out there. We were out there playing on defense, and we were out there beating teams. We weren't just beating them. We was beating the shit up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, y'all was hitting. Yeah, sure. we, we, we was fucking teams up. Like, it wasn't even close. Like, I sacked Mariota eight, nine yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. We was, we was fucking teams up. So, you know, and, and the funny thing about it is I never really I never really was a, a pass. I'm, I'm more of a pass coverage yeah. athletic linebacker. I never, you know, I can blitz, yeah. you know, just off natural ability. But when I went to New England, after Dante Hightower got hurt, they start telling me I gotta do this rush shit. Yeah. So I'm like, man, what the fuck? Start- so Flo took me after practice and he started working with me. And it'd be it, and like I said, man, Flo's funny, but he's serious. He used to laugh like, man, that shit trash what you doing. Yeah. He's like, nah, we gonna use your athleticism. Don't be scared to use it. You got it. Yeah. He's like, you an athletic guy, you're not gonna grab no guy, you know, do these D-line yeah. moves. He said, Don't let him touch you. And once he kind of, you know, broke it down like that, you know, I started going on the field and started just doing athletic ass shit. And I was getting to the quarterback. Yeah, he was. So now I'm yeah. like, shit, I'm getting to the quarterback now because, you know, once I see it in speed, and I'm like, I'm chasing him down. So I'll never forget, I got, you know, a sack, half a sack. They didn't try to get it to me because I think people was confused. Because I played with Trey Flowers. Yeah. For, yeah. And me and Trey Flowers got my first set. We, we, it was me and Trey Flowers yeah. together. And I think they was confused. They thought it was just one Flowers on the team. Mm-hmm. I, I remember seeing people like, I didn't know we had two Flowers on the team. <laughs> so, um, they gave it to Trey. You know me, I'm not tripping. Whatever. We got the win. I know I got there. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I run up. So, so, basically what happened was I come in and, you know, they got me on the third down, whatever, against the Steelers. And, you know play a couple snaps but I gave up a first down so I'm like fuck Bill come talk to me I say yeah I fucked that one up I gave it first now I fucked up so the next week I didn't really play that much that game the Steelers that's just how it was with you know with uh with New England they game plan the shit out of everything it was just one of them weeks I wasn't gonna play a lot so the next week I come and I'm thinking like damn I fucked up you know I gave one third down one, you know, that's, yeah. how, that's how I think in my head like damn I fucked up damn we won the game though so I'm like cool we won bet you know, that was a good team. You know, they had the same record as us. So, us winning was huge, mm-hmm. huge. So, um, I come in the next week, and I remember them saying, you know, I come in, I'm standing there. And they're like, um, you're starting this week. And I kind of look back like, what? I'm like, man, stop fucking with me. He's like, nah. And he's like, Bill, you know, I seen the other kind of guys kind of looking. And he's like, Bill wants him to start this week because, you know, Ty, we playing Tyrod Taylor. Yeah. And he gives us fucking, he gives us problems with him scrambling around. So I go on there, I'm like, okay, Matt Patricia got a plan for me. So he, we ran down the board, and I think that's when it really was born of what I really could do. Yeah. And they said, you know, they, they built some shit basically where I'm mirroring the quarterback. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, all right, I am mirroring the quarterback. You know, it's simple. Line up on the line, you know, just line up any, really anywhere the fuck you want. Fuck around with the line and mirror quarterback. So I'm like, all right, bet. So I started doing it, and I never forget, the game started off slow. You know, I hit my back the wrong way. My back fucking hurting. And I remember Coach Flo getting on our ass. Like, you know, he talking hella shit. He like, y'all not ready. 
what a, that's what I'm seeing out here. You, you got missed tackles, y'all bullshitting, keys ain't fucking lining up right, missed tackles. Yeah. I'm just like, damn, he going off right now. I'm like, man, we playing against Tyrus Taylor and LaShawn McCoy. Like, come on, bro. He, like, they good. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. I'm like, he talking that shit again. So now I'm getting hot. I'm like, okay, I'm about to go out here and show him, like, you know, I am ready. So, you know, I remember them driving downfield again. I'm like, fuck, coach finna take us out. Like, it's over. Yeah. And I'm done. This is it. Yeah. I want to do this start so bad. I fucked it up. But I remember us, you know, getting, you know, our reds on defense real good. So we stopped. And I remember it being third down and then got another stop. So I remember, I remember it being fourth down. And I remember I had to do a little stunt. And I did the stunt, but I didn't do it good. You know, so the dude grabbed me, and I remember seeing Tyrod Taylor take off, and I spent out on him. And when he took off, he tried to beat me to the edge. He saw he couldn't beat me to the edge. He kind of stopped, tried to shake me, whatever. Long story short, I get the sack. Yeah. So we get off on fourth down. I'm like, let's go. And I'm like, damn, that drive wasn't that good, but that yeah. made it better. Yeah. So I go over to coach, and I'm waiting for him to cuss me out. He like, that's a little better. And he like, now we fucking playing football. So I'm like, all right, bet. Yeah. So now I'm warmed up to it. Now we playing football. So now I start mirroring him. Now I'm on Tyrod Taylor's ass the whole game. Yeah. Anywhere he go, I'm on his ass. I get another sack on him before halftime. So now I got two sacks before halftime. And I just remember I'm on his, like, every time he scrambled, as soon as he put the ball down, I'm running through that motherfucker, like, full speed, yeah. like, on his ass. So he can't do nothing. And I could kind of tell he was getting frustrated. He like, damn, like, who is this dude? <laughs> so, so then, um, so then I, you know, during the game, I just remember going to Salah and, you know, the offensive players like, hey, man, keep balling out there. You're doing good. Keep balling. Keep balling. And, you know, and honestly, I, I honestly didn't do as good as I could have. Yeah. I could have done so much better. People don't even understand that shit. Like, I'm the only one who understands that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, I ended the game with 10 tackles and two and a half sacks. Shine, I'm, like, boy. I'm like, I'm like, I'm thinking I'm the big player of the week. I, all I remember is me getting to the locker room. And I got messages like crazy. I got messages from my old teammates. And I was like, bro, you had 10 tags, two and a half sacks. Like, dog, like, that's hella good. You about to be AFC player of the week. And I'm just like, you know, my girl texting me like, I'm proud of her, whatever. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, I really played trash. Like, yeah. I really could have, I didn't play trash, did but it, I really yeah. could have did better. So I'm thinking to myself, like, because the Patriots is, you know, they about, you know, we want to win, but we always about improving. Yeah. So that I remember that whole week, you know, I go home. Everybody like, man, you did good, man. I'm just thinking to myself, like, man, they ain't finna cuss me out. I'm like, I'm like, I ain't starting no more. I know yeah. Bill finna be on my fucking head and all that. But it wasn't even that. It was all love. And, you know, I go in there. And the first thing, every time I go in there, even when I'm nervous, I kind of, you know, see my coach. I'll be like, man, what the, what he going to say first? Yeah. Like, I, his first word is going to tell me how it's going to go. Yeah. And all he said, you remember, because I told him he a funny guy. I remember him doing like, all I got to hear about all week is this, is, is Marquise having two and a half sacks. That's yeah, all I got to hear. Lucky, he was like, lucky ass that, you know, he talks. So I'm like, all right, cool. We going to be cool then. Yeah. I'm like, so, um, and then after that, man, it was just like one of them things like, well, now I'm a, I'm a part of the defense now. And that's how I felt. I'm part of the team. Yeah. I'm part of defense. Major. Like, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a piece in it that you know, going forward we need. And then it just happened so that after that game, we played teams like Mark's Mary, the play where I was able yeah. to mirror him and help us win. You know, one of the biggest things, man, when we won the AFC Championship game, I was mirroring Blake Bortles too. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest things was, you know, Bill coming up to me like, you know, we couldn't have got to, to the Super Bowl without a shine you know moment. Saying? Like, and he, he told a lot of guys that, but it's just one of the moments where it was like, all right, man, this is what it's about, man. I'm actually playing. I'm going to a Super Bowl, and I was just playing in the fucking preseason on the fourth quarter on on a, on their fourth string yeah. or whatever, the Bengals, and now I'm going right. to the Super Bowl. Bengals so, you know, you. young, you know, I'm talking my shit here and there about the Bengals. Like, you know, I, I could have done this with y'all, but y'all yeah. didn't want to. You know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to do shit like that, obviously. You live and you learn. You know, and, um, you know, we obviously we go to the Super Bowl and everybody knew that I was, you know, kind of pissed off at the Bengals. So I, they was asking me stories. And I used to tell them stories about how I never played. And, you yeah. know, they couldn't believe, like, why don't they develop you? And, you know, the coach used to sit there and ask me, watch on film. And Bengals come like, who, who is this guy? Yeah. And like, why? Like, you weren't playing over him? And I'll just be like, man, like, don't, don't get me started in here. So, um, but, you know, they just, you know, it was it was more of a family thing. But, yeah. you know. Obviously, man, it was one of them, one of them seasons, man. It was one of the greatest seasons I had, man. Yeah. Even, you know, going to the Super Bowl, obviously coming up short in the Super Bowl, but just that whole experience of that being part of something, man, and, and Give helping. Us that Super Bowl helping experience, us. man. I mean, the Super Bowl was a huge distraction. It's like even leading up. Distraction, man. Yeah. <laughs> the Super Bowl is a huge distraction, man. It's cool for everybody who's not playing in it, but for us who was playing in it, it's just it's so easy to get distracted. But it is a huge game. All the media before, all the hype. 
But once the ball kicked off, man, it was just like another game, man. But it was like one of them things, man, when we was losing, it felt like time was going by fast as shit. <laughs> and if we win, that shit was barely inching by. Yeah. So that whole game, man, was crazy in the sense of, you know, it was just one of them games where, like, they had it out for us. I'm going yeah. to I'm I'm be 100. You know, that year we won a lot of games with that whole catch. Was it a catch? Was it not a catch? And by the rules, it wasn't a catch. So I think in the Super Bowl, they fucking switched the rules on us to, to, so they, so we wouldn't win because a lot of them catches would have been non-catches, but they got people got tired of us winning games like that. Like, it's not our fault. Yeah. That's the rules, you know? <laughs> That's the rules that y'all made, and they, they just somehow, we kept getting them that year. I think we won three games off of the shit. Mm-hmm. I mean, we won two games. One of them, the game wasn't even close, but they complained about it because it happened early, but we ended up beating the ass anyway. Yeah. But... It was it was just one of those things like the whole Stillers thing. Did he catch it? Did he not? You know, by rules he didn't catch it. Yeah. You know, so they they tried too hard, and I think what they did was they changed the rules on us mm-hmm. in that Super Bowl. So now they was calling them, which wouldn't be not catches. They was calling them catches, and it hurt because two of them was touchdown. That's yeah. points. You know, and it hurt. So it's one of those things. But every Super Bowl gonna have a controversy, bro. I noticed that. You know, yeah. even this last Super Bowl, you know. The 49ers fans felt like such an passing appearance or whatever, you know. And the Eagles definitely got away with some of the stuff in that game, yeah. man. It was just one of them nights, man. It was weird. And I'm not going to act like they didn't. They did make plays. There was a good damn that was a damn good football team. Yeah. They definitely made plays, too, on top of that. Yeah. But there were some plays that, you know, they got away with. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, you know, we, we didn't make enough plays or whatever. I just feel bad because Tom went fucking crazy. Crazy. He went absolutely crazy. And I just felt bad, you know, being on that de- being on a defense and our defense just not getting the job done yeah. for Tom. You know, obviously he eventually went and got that number six, but it really could be number seven. Could have been seven. seven. Because, yeah. I mean, they didn't do nothing exciting. You know, I played with Nick Foles, and I was happy for Nick Foles. Yeah. Like I said, I'm never Oh, yeah, that's your hate. boy. Yeah, yeah, that's my dog. So, <laughs> on the other side, I'm like, on one side, I'm pissed. We lost. On the other side, I'm like, damn, Nick Foles balled the hell out. Yeah. Like, he MVP. Like, good for him, mm-hmm. man. Because I always felt like he was a damn good player, and I always felt like he should have been a starter over there in Philadelphia. Yeah, sure. You know? Um but I'm gonna tell you right now, Carson Wentz would have played. It'd been a different story. Oh, I'm telling you, we'd have been ready because that's the that it was just that what we were seeing. We were seeing a Carson went the athletic mobile quarterbacks all leading up to it. We yeah. played Blake Bortles, we played Marcus Mariota, we played Tyrod Taylor, all going into the shit. So if we would have seen Carson win, it'd have been. Nick Foles actually, it fucked us up when yeah. Nick Foles was back there because he wasn't a scrambler. Uh-huh. He was going to sit in that pocket and he was going to throw the ball. And that's what he so was it was doing. like, damn. You know, he was, you know, they had a, a great game plan for us. Um, like I said, it was just, it's a deep, dark depression when you lose that Super Bowl, man, when you get all the way there yeah. and you just don't finish it. But it's still, you know, you talk to a lot of guys, man, you be like, yeah, man, I lost Super Bowl. They be like, shit, at least you got there. Yeah. And then to you be like, man, fuck, I'm going to win. But to them, it's like, they serious. At least you got there. They, yeah. There's guys that been in the league that haven't even been to the playoffs in 10-year yeah. careers. So I'm blessed, man. And, and and that's what I had to realize, man. I'm I'm truly blessed. That year, man, I think the Patriots, that's my favorite organization. You know, out of teams I play for, hands down, just, be, just by the way they handle business. Um, you know, when you're there, obviously, it's still a business. League is still going to do some stuff that, you know, they gonna, it's business first. Yeah, always. Um, you know, so I've been the last couple of years on, on the business side, unfortunately, even with New England mm-hmm. and Washington um, getting cut for the lesser, cheaper player. Yeah. You know, it's business. They, they save them money, whatever. Bottom but line. The only thing I care about but the bottom line. Hands down, if, if they called me, it wouldn't even be a question. I'll be back in New England yeah. before they can even hang up the phone. I'm on the flight. <laughs> because, um, I mean, it's just the professionalism they have over there. You know, from the coaching, the professionalism, the owner, the fan love, everything was perfect, man. We yeah. love, man, my family loved Boston. Man, I hope it did. And do. they welcomed us. And, you know, like I said, I'm I'm getting back right, you know, after this injury thing I got going on. We, once I get that settled, man, I'm, I'm ready to go try to, you know, help a team win, yeah. man. Again, I'm trying to, and that's what, that's what it's about. I'm about winning, man. I, lo- I love to win, hate to lose, love to win, love to try to get better every day, chase perfection. You yeah. know, even though you ain't going to ever play perfect, you chase it. You know, you chase it. I want to tell you this, though, because just because I want to, and we're just about wrapping up, but I want to put stuff, like, in more perspective for you because I know, like, with you being in those shoes and, like, obviously you're talking about other people in the league, so you're, like, comparing everything to your peers and everything. But I want to kind of, because I'm 28, I'm from West Phoenix, you know what I'm saying? So I came up probably around, like, the same time as you damn near. I graduated 09, you graduated 2010. 
So even though, like how you say, like, oh, losing that Super Bowl puts you in a deep, dark depression or whatever the case may be when shit don't work out, bro, don't ever feel like you should even feel, like, remotely bad or need to hang your head about anything because just to hit those kind of heights and, like, the grind that you put in and to actually, even a lot of people put that grind and they still don't do it, so you got to be blessed on top of that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, bro, cherish that. And obviously keep grinding and, and always work to do it even bigger, but don't never, ever think. Like, honestly, you got, like, that stuff you can sit around and just kick it with your grandkids already. Yeah. The stuff that people got to do 45 years for it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you already got that. So I want you to know, don't let that go. But I got one more question for you about the Super Bowl. Why did Malcolm Butler not play in the Super Bowl? I can't even get into that, man. I always speak on myself, big dog. Uh, I didn't even know he didn't play. That's something that Malcolm Butler going to have to tell the world if he ever feel like telling them or the Patriots or Bill, because I honestly don't even know. Um, I kind of stay in my own lane. I was so focused on why I didn't play good enough for us to win. You know, I didn't be focused on, on Malcolm. Man. I just know Malcolm's a good player, man, good yeah. teammate. And I'm glad he got, you know, you know his just do with the Titans. Um, I love playing with Malcolm. That's my dog. Again, I'm not gonna speak on that. Man. That's, that's not. <laughs> he won Super Bowl <laughs> fifty uh, or forty, yeah, not whatever. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not speaking. I have no idea, man. First, the man of all. played ninety eight percent of the snaps. They said that season. Yeah, man, he was out there. Him and him and Stephon Gilmore was a tandem. You know, a tandem that was you know, damn, damn good, man. So whatever, yeah. whatever. Like I said, Malcolm ever want to come out and tell you because he gonna know better than me. I can't tell yeah. him nothing. I don't even know. I didn't even know he did it. I was in the locker room. Yeah. They asked me after the game. I was so focused that we lost. I didn't even know he did it. Yeah. So, you know, again, I don't talk on no other players, you know, you know, misfortune or game or yeah. anything. I don't I don't speak on any stuff, you know, out of respect for the players. Yeah. And just, you know, respect, you know, like I said, I'm from West Phoenix. We don't do no snitching. Yeah. <laughs> um, Beautiful okay. media trainer, man. This brother, <laughs> hey, this brother is good. All right. So after the Patriots, you know, um, you went to Detroit and Washington. I like uh, I was reading up on uh, about just being in Detroit, and I love what you said because it kind of put me in a perspective because you said you walked in there feeling entitled, and I was like, damn, I feel like sometimes I'll be entitled nowadays. Like, it, it really made me be like, I need to just shut the fuck up sometimes and just keep working hard. Like, you know what I mean? Because I read that, and I'm like, damn, that it really spoke volumes to me. But so now you're doing your thing, and, and you're waiting for that next opportunity, rehabbing, working hard. What was the um, injury? The, uh, was it hamstring? or Nah, man, I had a little little problem with my neck in Washington on my oh, last okay. piece of the game. But yeah, man, just to follow up on Detroit, yeah, I felt, um, you know, I had to be a man about it. I fucked that shit up. Um, yeah. Hands down. Matt Patricia looked out for me, mm-hmm. brought me into something in a culture that he was trying to build. And the Patriots play, you know, they played with my head. I let, For the first time, I let somebody get in my head. And, you know, I felt entitled. I felt like, yeah. you know, after the season I had with the Patriots, I felt like I, I deserved you know, some, you know, playing time for the first time. I, I walked in there like I didn't have to work for nothing because I got tired of seeing the guys, you know, at the free agency and, you know, coming out of the draft and how they just get thrown on the field. I'm like, man, I, I proved that I could play. You know, yeah. I, I should be on the field. So for the first time, man, I wasn't myself, man. I really wasn't, man. I was out of my mind and I lost my way. So, you know, but I got it back, you know, family, friends, you know, telling me I'm tripping. I remember, you know, my uncle came to a game and was like, man, I seen you over there away from the whole team looking mad. Yeah. Like, what's up? And I'm like, damn, you know, my girl telling me, like, you tripping, like, you mad. You seem miserable. Like, you always yelling, cussing, waking up in the morning. So, you know, I had to I had to really just, you know, sit back and like, damn, you know, I really, I messed that opportunity up, you know. Uh-huh. And I would talk to Matt Patricia as a man and tell him, you know, that was more me. Mentally, I wasn't right, yeah. you know. And I, and I have no problem, you know, admitting to my wrong. I wasn't right, you know, but... Um, I'm back, you know, I'm, I'm back, right. You know, um, I thought I did really, really well in Washington. They put me in a different position, played me kind of out of position, but I did it for the team. And I, you know, I made some great plays, you know, obviously they came, they made the decision that they made, you know, business decision again, you know, I mean, time you, you take a player from another team who really didn't do anything and, and sign them after you've done this, a business decision, he young, yeah. cheap or whatever. So it was you, a business You're only 27. Yeah, I'm 28. I'm 28. Or, or I just turned 28, 28 now. on the 16th of February. So I'm 28 now. But, um, yeah, I was only 27. You know, I played for Coach Rob Ryan. I loved it, you know, Coach Rob, because he wasn't the coach to keep it real. You know, mm-hmm. he told me the real deal when I walked in after they cut me. That's all you asked for. You know, yeah. that's all you asked for is just, you know, the real spill. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he told me that. He kept it 100 with me. And, um, you know, that's all you can ask for. I'm ready to play, though. 
You know, no matter what team. Hopefully it's the Cardinals. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind playing for the home team. I would love that. You know, I would love to go back to play. It don't matter. I don't mind playing for the whole team. But, you know, um, I just want an opportunity. Yeah. Opportunity to help the team win, man. Like I said, you know, special teams and all that. I'm, I'm, I'm back. I'm back to my, you know, being grateful for, you know, every day and every, every possibility. So It's going to come. It sounds like from listening to you, because this is my first time really having an extensive conversation with you, but it sounds like those opportunities always come for you. It just sounds like sometimes you're ready, sometimes you're not. You know yeah. what I mean? So now it's just, I mean, at this age, Ain't nothing but to buckle down, you know what I mean? Yeah, because you're absolutely. in the prime of your of your athletic prowess right now, like absolutely in the prime, man. Feeling good, so um, you know, like I said, I'm working working out, ready. You know, like I said, I got several days before any team talk, but looking to catch on, man. Hoping to catch on. If not, it doesn't happen. I'm still thankful. I'm still Would you do grateful. the XFL? No. <laughs> Why not? No. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm playing in the NFL or, or nothing. You know, yeah, what I'm, I got saying? You, yeah. I'm, I'm not a guy who's gonna go to the CFL, XFL, you know, mm-hmm. and, and play out there. No, I heard they pay you dudes in the XFL. That's why I heard. I ain't heard that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it ain't even about it ain't even about the money or nothing like that. It's just about you know the fact, man. Good to them guys to get guys looks who ain't got tape, but yeah. I can't go to the XFL when I know I'm, you know, yeah. better than half the linebackers. Oh, I stand by that. Better than half the linebackers in the NFL. Yeah. You know, they know that too because anytime I go out to a team, the head coach come talk to me and they're like, you know, what's your story? Um, you know, why have you bounced around and stuff? Like, it's something I can't control, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, Absolutely. Um, again, you know, that's not me. That's just me being confident in myself and my abilities. If I get a chance for the NFL again, you know, I'm going to buckle down. Hopefully, I get put in the right, you know, my position personally. But if they need me to play a difference, I will, you know, yeah. because that's how I am. I'm a team guy, and I do what's best for the team. But, you know, sometimes it comes bite me back, bite me in the butt, but it's all good. You know, the players, and hopefully, you know, if we sign the CBA or not, all that's going to factor in. But right now, I'm just going to be working, yeah. working out, staying Damn, ready. Thanks. Stay ready. That's yeah. all you can do. Be prepared for the next opportunity. But, um, all right, so the last question would be one more double in the question, then we'll wrap. Is there ever any, like, free agency or injury depression and um after that talk about like how long do you want to play the game there is there's no free agency injury i mean you always gonna go back and be like man i should have done this or i should have done this i should have signed this two-year deal and i would be here i would be here you every every player does that um because you know you everyone does that in life you always gonna say what happens if i would have did this but we don't know you know so you just got to kind of move on um there's really no depression man i mean honestly being a free agent right now is just, you know, it, it, it allowed me to to do things that I wasn't able to do. You know, yeah. I've been at home with my kids, man. I got three beautiful kids, going on four, and um, just being a dad, man. I love being a dad. I love my son's about to start playing football, you know. So he 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 got flag football coming up. My daughters, man, beautiful and you know bossy and everything, all of the above. Love being with them, my girlfriend. You know, like I said, one day going to be my wife. Shine on um, it for that, too. Yeah, man. Met her in high school. Man, she a real soldier. Just having all the kids all the time while I'm out here, you know, playing football and doing that. Just being home with them and and, and um, just seeing them grow. My youngest daughter, I've probably been with her the most out of all my kids, and it definitely shows. And, you know, she's a daddy's girl. And, um, you know, they all just, you know, I got another girl on the way. So, um, I'm having girls like a motherfucker out here. <laughs> but I got another girl on the way and um they just, you know, it's just it, it, it's it's beautiful being that with them, being dad. Cause like you say, you can't play this game forever and that leading to your next question. I don't know how long I wanna play this game. You're supposed to play this game so they don't want you to play no more, honestly. Mm-hmm. But for me, I'm 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 always real with myself. If I ever step on the field and I feel like I'm not good, I know when I'm not. If I feel like it's just like, yo, you trash. I'm telling myself, you trash. You're yeah. not good enough. You're not finna sit out here yeah. and, you know, be this. Tra- like, I'm, I'm walking away from the game. It's time for me to go. Let the young dudes have it. Like I said, I'm 28. You know, some football years come fast. Yeah. You know, I say, you know, I'm going to be 30. Yep. And, you know, I always used to say I don't want to play after I'm 30, but I'll probably play as long as I can. And then I'm going to know when I can. Yeah. I'm going to know when it's time to to hang the cleats up. And like I said, I might not get a call. You know, it's, it's not, it's no guarantee. I might not get another call. That's fine. You know, I'm going to be ready. But if I don't get a call, man, I play six years and I'm grateful. You yeah. know, I'll go home, be with dad, full time dad, you know, and start the next journey. Yeah. You know, so, um, I'm looking for, for whatever, but you know, yeah. I'm having dreams and I'm feeling like I'll play, I'll get the opportunity, nah, but you know, you don't, you don't throw your eggs in the basket. Cause now it's like, it's more of, 
50 50 it's like you gotta be ready and they gotta want you yeah you know more than just me wanting to go play i'm not a guy with that media hype that i can just say hey i'm coming back to the nfl i want to play and all these teams come and try to get me yeah nah, it's not like that you know they gotta have interest too you so, create that though yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah you create interest you know so that i mean i'm gonna be ready so if the team come give me try to work me out that that would create some buzz yeah. and you know i'll go work out you know, and, and do the best I can, and, and then hopefully, you know, we get signed. Obviously, 90-man rosters for training camp, it's, you know, you know, it's a lot of players to get yeah. on, but, you know, they're going to give it to guys they feel worthy or whatever, yep. and, you know, but if I do get a chance, like I said, I'm trying to help the team win, yep. you know, so you know, I'll be ready. Shout out to you, man. I'm looking forward to your next opportunity. I want to thank you for uh, coming through again, dog. You well articulated. Like, outside of being an athlete, I can tell you got a crazy great head on your shoulders with – Coming from West Phoenix, it can go one way or the other. You know what I mean? So that's beautiful, man. Keep doing your thing. And uh, like I said, we all going to be watching your Arizona Hall of Famer, regardless of what happens. And uh, shit, it's a big-ass state, so that's a big-ass honor regardless. But uh, we can't wait to hopefully see you back on the gridiron doing it at the highest level. But now you can give shout-outs, tell people where to follow you, talk about anything you got coming up, anything else, business ventures, whatever you like to talk about, man. Oh, man, I just appreciate appreciate y'all having me, man. Like I said, I'm an Arizona Arizona guy, man, to the fullest. You catch me all through Arizona, man. I don't go to the south side too much. Yeah, yeah, nah. You know what I'm <laughs> but, uh, but, you see Will Clay have to run away from that <laughs> one. Yeah. Nah, we, uh, nah, it's all love from everywhere in Arizona, man. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be a track meet, you know, watching them. And, you know, I'm going to take my son. You know, he got football. I actually been working on the XOs with Diana Taurasi. She's really cool, she's down to earth. One of one of the best, you know. She, she's like the Kobe Bryant of the WNBA. She is. And she's, she's the Michael Jordan. She, yeah, honestly, she, 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 she's huge. See that? That's where I got to stop because I think Kobe better than Jordan. So, bro, I'm a I huge to... Kobe fan. We got, I got to, like Kobe. Like I said, I show you. I got the Lakers tatted on me, bro. Yeah. I'm, I obviously, subject. Uh, my opinion, I'm a ride with Kobe, but just being honest, yeah, he, he came close. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> honest, I'm, I'm Kobe over Jordan. You know, I like Jordan. No disrespect, but I'm Kobe over. Jordan, that's my era, you know. Kobe. That's I'm my era it. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watch. I don't. Dudes just be saying Jordan Bear because they like his shoes. So nah, uh-uh. I'm not on that move. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm on straight basketball. Kobe took Jordan's game. I get that. He perfected it though. You know, he perfected it. So I'm a ride with it regardless. But Diana Taurasi is definitely man, down to earth, cool man. I told her the other day, man, I'm gonna take my daughters and go see her play. You know, I'm gonna take my son too. Just let them know. You know, you know, there's 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 women out here that's doing big things too. Yeah. And um. Much respect to her. Um, and, you know, I got some business things coming up. Can't really get into it. I'm trying to get the idea protected. But it's definitely going to be huge. I feel like it's definitely going to, you know, um, bring fans from every sport, you know, and give them something, you know, to rock their favorite player, rock their favorite team. Like that's, yeah. I'm going to give you that. But other than that, you know, I'm just, you know, uh, again, I love being a dad. I love being there for my kids, man. You know, I got four of them. So, you know. And I got to get married to this to, to a girl, you know, that's been rocking with me and down for me. So, you know, there's stuff that I still have to do, stuff that I'm, I'm looking forward to doing. And, um, you know, playing football was definitely my dream. Uh, I had a great support system, and it's not done yet. And then if it is, we don't know yet. But the day, you know, and when I know that I'm not, it's not getting no interest or nothing like that, I'll retire. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll make it known, you know, I'm, I'm good, I'm done. But right now, I just feel like I still got more juice left in me, man. And yeah. I can go out there and help a team win. So, you know, the business and all that, I'm kind of, you know, slowly getting it started, getting it up. But if it come up, I'll definitely let you know. I'm not huge on, you know, you know, I'm on social media, uh, Marquise Flowers 59 on Instagram. I think it's like Keith, Keith Flowers 59 on um, Twitter. You know, Mr. Hit That underscore two on Snapchat, you know. I'm, I'm I'm not a big video guy, video myself, you know, my girl. I, I was going to say I wasn't big on social media, but she'll be the first one to come in here like, yeah, right. You know, she'll be on my head about that social media shit. So, um, but nah, man, I'm, you know, I'm cool, man. You see me, you know, just speak up. You know, I'm always, you know, answer back, man. And I'm looking forward to all the great talent because Arizona got a lot of great talent, man. And, you know, sometimes I'll make it for whatever reason, man. But, you know, we, we there's a lot of talent out here young man and i'm glad that these parents are starting these kids young and um man the sky's the limits man arizona 
is always going to be home, and I'm always going to ride for Arizona. I, I argue with everybody everywhere I go. Phoenix is the best city. I don't <laughs> care where they're from, you know. I don't care. You know, I got guys from, you know, they try to be from, or they're from Georgia. I don't care. Yeah. You know, I don't want to hear it. I'm like, <laughs> Phoenix, I bet you come to Phoenix. I tell them all the time, you'll fall in love. You'll do all yeah. that. We got everything out here. You know, they talk about it's too hot and all that. But there's a lot of dudes, man, in the NFL that actually come to Phoenix and always get houses out here and stuff. Yeah. So they like Phoenix, man. So, you know, we own it. Um, like I said, man, I'll let them know I'm from West Side Phoenix. So I was trying to put it on the map. But, you know, shout out to – only shout outs I want to give, man. Shout, shout out to the Millennium Basketball Girls, man. Shout out to the boys and the girls. You know, the Millennium Girls back-to-back state champion. Hey. You know, what y'all doing is huge. And then the boys, man, keep y'all head up. Back to back, you know, I know y'all came up short, but it's all right, though. Y'all y'all still representing. And, you know, all the young athletes out there that, you know, expire to make it out of Phoenix or Arizona, don't think you can't, man, because, you know, we got some good athletes out here. So that's all I want to do. Shout out all Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, man. It's been a wonderful episode, episode 118. Y'all know we're going to do this thing till it's, till it's over. Mike broadcast live from the grave. But, uh, Pass on radio, man. Y'all have a wonderful day. Shine moment. Shout out to Marquise Flowers once again. Ah, good shit, dog. Oh.